Hello everybody, welcome to Dire Roll Fire and Blade. I am the Dungeon Master Jaken, and I am joined by my players. Today, Caddy is out sick, so we once again have new guy. Sorry. Sadly. Yeah. Uh, so he'll be reprising and uh, continuing as Varal. Um, a few things, the party is now level 7. Uh, everybody leveled up, right? I don't have to worry about anybody? Yep. Okay, it's been a hectic week. Gonna, I haven't been able to babysit you guys. <laughs> it um, is important to note that behind the camera, Jacob's a big meat. I just wanted to put it out there. I'm alright with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll allow it. Um, alright, so, uh, recapping last week, you guys uh, finally punched through the defenses of the uh, Illusionary Sanctum, only to learn that you had been deceived. Apparently, uh, Shugel is more powerful than he appears, and he sent a fake message just to get you guys to fight your way through the defenses uh, for his own amusement. And then he also said, hey, you know, it also help you get ready for the upcoming battle. Um, and everybody was really weirded out, but no more so than Drosan, who began referring to him as Diago. El, El Diago. Diago. Yeah. Diago. Yeah, El Diago. <laughs> uh, and uh, they also learned about... Uh, he, he, he encouraged them to ask Caddy's father about the story of Jacoby the Bold. And they learned about this halfling uh, about 200 years ago. He helped defeat the dragon Mechvokogblon, the sleeper no longer who has awoken, the first time around. And he purported to have arrows designed to uh, harm and uh, wing, clip the wings of dragons. So, after... Uh, uh, there was also... Um, Caddy learned that she had altered memories, and Shugo was able to remove them, and she learned that she had a twin sister who died in the marshes, and no one remembers her except now Caddy, who has had the memories awoken. Um, so that'll be interesting for when she joins us next week. And you guys pursued the grandson of Jacoby the Bold, his name was Cataran, and you learned that he squandered his family's fortune, got uh, on the wrong side of the law, and got his right hand chopped off as punishment. And he is in hiding from a, a, a rumored specter named the Headless Prince, supposedly the Prince of Yagshir, the island to the north of... Uh, of these lands, just off the coast. Um, he, and Jacoby believes he's come to exact revenge because um, when he teamed up with the Northmen, which got him into trouble, one of the Northmen that he betrayed in order to uh, save his own skin was cousin to uh, the, the royal family of Yagshir. So he's hided, he hid himself away in his manor, and the party made their way through his rather, rather rudimentary traps to finally find... Um, Cataran. Cataran is a very disagreeable man who had no interest in helping them. However, the headless prince did show up, and it turns out that yes, he was there looking for Cataran to exact justice. And um, Cataran made a, struck a bargain with the party. He said, "I will give you my grandfather's arrows if you get rid of the headless prince." So the party uh, began parlaying with the headless prince, and they learned that the headless prince was actually on a much more noble. Um, mission, quest. Uh, it seems that his entire family in the, the keep of Ofenborg had been butchered by one of their prisoners, a, a man named Volunder the Smith. The only living relative is uh, pregnant with Volunder's child, uh, not necessarily uh, her idea. And he is he has been looking for warriors to go avenge his family and save his sister. However, none of the warriors of Yagshir want to go near the keep. They say it's cursed and haunted, and uh, they are a superstitious lot, and they refuse to go in. Which is why the Headless Prince has traveled to the kingdom of Wemiria. He heard that the Wemirians have uh, warriors that might aid him. Uh, and then after some go back and forth, he promised them a magical ring that Valunder had made him. And he also magic. He also offered them his family's axe, which he told them was a giant slayer. So finally, the party uh, agreed, and they chartered a ship. 
and they have sailed to the, the village that sits underneath the keep of Ofenborg. Now, along the way, uh, two things will happen. First, I believe Vaclo and Veral, you guys wanted to... Uh, at least Ver Vaclo, you wanted to... Off since, Va since Veral has been disarmed, his only mm -hmm. weapon was de destroyed by an ooze. Well, big weapon. Right. Yeah, I I'm going to give him like my spare longsword. It's master work. I think it's... It's plus one non magic. It's, it's from the dwarven ruins we've made at the start of the campaign, so yeah. So it's Master One. So to save up some time and make it like logical, I'm assuming what would happen is that on the ship, Veral would probably be taking care of his weapon, trying to see what he can do with this broken long sword that was kind of fixed, and then Vaclo's walking by, seeing this, and going like, oh, come on, dude, like, here's a, here's a much better sword. Yep, I'm gonna part with my new weapon just, just like if I had made up my mind to adopt Spirit Reaver, also. And it's uh, not mine. do you have the stats on hand for your longsword? It, it's just a, it's a plus one, but it doesn't so do magic, magic damage. bonus plus one. Yeah, it's got a magic bonus of plus one, but it doesn't actually, it's not actually magical. It, it's not magical. It's just yeah, well, it's just, it's just hella dope. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um. So as we start today's episode, we're actually gonna start. Uh, back at the Stellwater College where Romulus finally has awoken from his coma. Uh, he, his, his brain has been remapped to the new circlet. Uh, he lost the circlet of Tula and he has gained the circlet of Sasha. So, Romulus, as you awaken, um, you find yourself in a dimly lit room, lying on a bed, with all kinds of magical uh, sigils and, and symbols kind of uh, sketched onto the walls around you. Um, and as soon as you come to, a large, burly wizard, who you recognize as Sven, the one of the mages of Stellwater, comes up to you uh, and looks at you with, with his same neutral expression that you've always seen him have. And he says, We were starting to think you wouldn't wake up. Oh, right. How how long was I asleep? A few days. No more than three. Uh, and and wh where's uh, everyone? I guess Caddy, really. Ah, uh, well, Caddy uh, and your hunchback friend and a dwarf set off for the recluse. However... We've been tracking their movements, and we know they are on a small ship headed for Yagshir. Right. Um. Uh. I I guess I should uh, get going that way then. And he he'd like, he's like half. Oh, like he's waking up, but he's waking up from a several day sleep. Right. And he like stumbles up, and he's just like, uh, got a map or anything? Actually. <laughs> Um, our our particular order of magi have uh, have power over the Rostriga Ocean near the shore, specifically Stell Bay. Um, we believe we can transport you there straight to the boat. Oh yeah, that makes sense that you you have magic that can do that since you magic college. Um, well, yeah, I. I I'd like to go there, then, yes. God, I have a headache. Alright, well, um, he kind of, like, opens the door t uh, in the room you're in, he's like, uh, and he starts talking as he's leaving, expecting you to follow, and he says, alright, well, um, the way our magic works is, uh, since there's no magic circle, we will have to drop you in the water. So, um, we will wait, we believe they're nearing their destination, and once the ship starts to slow down, we'll plop you along, slide it, and hope they get the message. It's clear skies, and uh, there's still some daylight, so they should be able to spot you. You know how to swim, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, very much so, yes. Right, alright, good. <laughs> Thank you for, for all the help, sir. Sorry I woke up in a bit of a struggle. Well, I can't imagine what you've been through. I never, never experienced what you have, so... Honestly, none of us have, so we didn't know what to expect. Guess that's just me. 
No, no one expects the orc. It's true. So, you ready to go? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And he pulls out a scroll. Uh, can you take two steps to your left? Oh, right. All right. And then he mutters an enchantment, and you realize that you're standing in a magical circle, which glows with brilliant light for a moment, and then suddenly you're underwater. <laughs> PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> and he's eating drowns. All right, new character. <laughs> um, I guess I, I swim up and start looking for a boat. All right. Just as you break the uh, the surface of the water, you see coming almost directly at you is a uh, a small uh, ship. It's a two mast ship, um, twenty twenty five feet long. He, I think, guess that's my ride, and start swimming towards it. And, okay. Like, trying to. I mean, it's coming right at you. Oh, then swimming to the side of it. Okay. <laughs> so you swim to the Let's side of it. Just... To okay, so you start shouting. Um, uh, the trio, um, you guys are top deck, and you start hearing amongst the, the crashing waves as the, the ship plows and makes a wake. Um, you guys kind of hear this uh, chorus shouting coming from the side of the ship. <sighs> I'm gonna take a look overboard. The, okay. the comment of Voral as he goes to look overboard is, who goes for a swim? <laughs> I bet it's one of the uh, mermaid folks that's out for a swim, trying to bid us uh, welcome. Yep, just some mermaids, yep. Alright, well, uh, when you all look over the edge, you see that you're fastly approaching and, about to, and, all, and, and you will soon pass Romulus, who has somehow found his way uh, in the water. What's she doing here? Um, I'm gonna look for a rope and try to yeah. Okay, yeah, they a have they have, an a, anchor. <laughs> they have a sort of um, dinghy thing that they use to yeah, it, it's it's a rudimentary floating device uh, tied to a rope that you can throw and tr he can a, grab a onto pig it. bladder inflated pig bladder. So I'm gonna throw it. <laughs> uh, Jerosen's gonna try and stop him while saying, Oh no, don't do that. If they get into water, they'll die. Yeah, we don't want to kill a mermaid. <laughs> the, oh, you don't recognize him. That's... I think that's our friend. <laughs> the ship is now alongside him. Uh, I'm, I'm throwing the... I'm throwing the... Okay. Skin. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all getting ready to put, help pull him up. All right. Um, it lands gracefully next to Romulus. Romulus grabs on, and you guys hoist him aboard. Uh, no. Dro is really excited until he sees that it's not a mermaid, and then he goes, "Oh, it's just a normal half orc." Oh, okay. No, he's full orc actually. That is same okay. thing to him. Our, same thing. That was same, our same. sleepy friend that uh, you've met. The one with the map. For the yeah. you met us. Yep. Yeah. I don't believe I've met this man. Uh, is this the, the one with the map? Yeah, the, the map. The main map. <laughs> All right, well. Yeah, um, yeah I, I don't believe I have met you. Perhaps you met me while I was sleeping for three days. Um, well, uh, my, my name's Romulus, and he just sticks out his hand, which is the size of half your torso. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm Jerson, Jerson Shinra. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Um, just uh, just curious. Um, can I see this map? I'm very curious about it. Keep hearing about it. Uh, and while you look for that map, since <laughs> nobody's asking, can I ask, how did you end? Be cut off. How did you end up here? Like, how did you show up next to the boat? Oh. Uh, the, the college uh, that I, w I was staying with, uh, they, they threw me directly into the water. It was very traumatizing. From um, all the way over there, did they use a catapult? No, no, they they used magic. I was at a, a magic college. It, they used. And I lean over the back. Look, this one's not. He it, seems it, to need a circlet. I'm I'm gonna turn to Varl and say it, it was a magical catapult. Fair enough. Um, you guys never do anything normal. 
<laughs> That's fair. What's the what map are we speaking about? Oh, uh, the map of your mind. Yeah, it, it, the circle was mapping your brain, and so mm. Drozen is you know this is a second language for him, so he may have misinterpreted the entire uh. thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's very curious about your mind's map. Uh, yeah, Dr Drozen, was it? Uh, yep. I don't have a map on me, and if I did, it would be ruined. I was just in the water. Oh, yeah, I guess that's kind of true. Yeah, um, well, uh, if if we ever find a map, just let me know, and uh, I'd, I'd like to see it. I've never seen a mind map before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, okay, uh, well, uh, explain it later. Uh, Did you have to fight some sort of uh, creature or whatnot to get your get this mind back? A mind tour. <laughs> no, no. Maybe a mind flare. I like mine better. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to fight a pond with mind flare, but I quit. For yes. the whole ocean, I guess you could say. You, you, so you kill whales? Oh my god. Uh, I've never no, the met. water itself. He seems like bewildered by that. Like, he didn't know that was possible. <laughs> Romulus uh, is smiling really big. Alright, just then, um, one, of the, one of the ship's crew shouts, We're coming! We're coming up to the pier! And the crew starts, like, you know, making the preparations to... to Anchor and all that. So Romulus, um, everyone else has already seen this coming up, but you guys are headed to a small village built at the base of a rather steep mountain that just sort of plunges right into the ocean. There's no real um, shore. There is a raised uh, system of, of, of piers and, and a dock. Uh, and to one side there is what appears to be a small wharf with uh, longboats being uh, worked on or built. And the, this village is kind of scattered up into the mountain. And then you guys can see a rather prominent trail that zigzags up. And then uh, maybe 100, 200 feet above the, the, the water line and, uh, you know, up the mountain. So it's, it's some distance away. You see... A, um, a keep, a stone keep built with its back up against the mountainside. So it looks rather large, right? It's a populous city? It's a village, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's well populated, there's a lot of traffic. Um, it does seem to be, for, for like, there, there's a lot of um, non-residential buildings, um, I mean, there's, a, there's probably a few hundred buildings total of this village, and um, it seems like okay. there's a lot of centers for, uh, for for groups of people to gather. Um, actually, Vaclo, since you, you, you're kind of brought up to speed, uh, unlike Romulus here, you know that even though this is just a village, this is technically the political capital of uh, Yagshir, because mm -hmm. this is the king's village. Um so there's a lot of places for people to, uh, traveling to the, to visit the king to stay and have their clan about them and, and have clan meetings and all that. Um, all right. Now uh, the Northmen have a very strong uh, prevalence for warriors. Um, however, the people of Yagshir, once they stayed and, and uh, populated the place, a lot of them have turned to more rural trade. Um, you you got your 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 huntsmen's your your loggers, your and a lot a lot of farmers and and um, shepherds, shepherds probably yeah. yeah. So um, they, these these Northmen are not as fierce and feared as their Northmen from the actual north. Yagshir is technically part of the Eastern Kingdoms, and uh, so the the, the Yagshir people. Uh, but however, th since this is where the king lives. You guys see a large portion of, of armed men. Okay, but are these uh, sedentary north men, like, well known in the kingdoms? Do they have, like, political ties yeah. to Wymeria? Uh, Yagshir has a trading agreement with, um, with Wymeria. However, it is fairly tenuous. 
Um, the Northmen have a fearsome and violent reputation. And also here in Yagshir and other places in the north, they practice slavery, which Wimiria does not. So there's a little bit of, you know, culture clash going on, but they have a amicable, peaceful arrangement. So yeah, a strenuous alliance with some border skirmishes from time to time, I get. Yeah. And okay. um, for the audience, I'm still feeling under the weather. Uh, I'm going to try to mute myself if I have to cough. But if I don't, I apologize ahead of time. All right. So um, I'm not up to par with everything that happened. Are we expected here? I mean, no. we're, in our, we're here on a mission for uh, to, to recover something like that. Yeah, we're supposed to get someone, to get revenge for someone. Okay, uh, I'll recap the, the, the quest. So you open your quest log and there's your objectives. Um, <laughs> you are to you. Uh, breach the keep of Ofenborg, and um, you're, you're, you have two primary goals. Kill Volunder and save um, e Egil's sister. Her name is Behild. He also told you that his brother, uh, by the name of Slagfitter, has been risen as an undead of some variety, possibly similar to himself. Okay, and uh, Vaclo is convinced that this uh, this guy we have to kill, that then prison his sister. He's really evil. Like he oh yeah, he, categorically right evil. Up. Yeah. All right. So. There, you have no you have no moral issues with going in there and, and killing this man. Yeah, conscious mm -hmm, clear. Nice. All right. Uh, so Vato's gonna suggest that we find a place, a quiet place to discuss uh, our plan and uh, which will probably consist of finding information about the keep, the guards, rotation, uh, the different entrances if the wall is scalable or stuff like that. Even though I'm pretty sure Vaclo's never gonna be able to scale for a keep wall. But anyways, we're gonna find a shady inn, maybe. Well, as you guys are discussing this, um, the ship moors to the pier, and um, a retinue of six uh, warriors of Yagshir uh, come marching up to the captain as he as he drops Gangplank and uh, and comes to meet them. And you guys can overhear them. The leader of the warriors says, You brought warriors! That's not part of the arrangement. Uh, do I have my... I don't have my troop right now, so no, we're just talking not. about our group, right? Yeah. You notice that uh, the, the, the sailors uh, don't have any metal weapons on them. Any kind of weapons they have would be crude makeshift clubs of some kind. Billy clubs in size. Um, and none of them are wearing any kind of semblance of armor. So you guys stick out as, as, as a well-armed troop. I'm going to wait and see what the captain and the... the, the well, the, the captain immediately the turns to you guys who, who are uh, situated up against the edge of the... I mean, there's not a lot of space to maneuver on the, on the, the ship itself. Uh, and he's, he, he's like, Oh, um, these... Yeah, they're they're here. Um, uh, Lord Vaclo, perhaps. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna advance and enter the guy. I'm gonna like slightly bow to the leader of the guards, and I'm gonna say like, we are from Wymeria, and we're here on business. What business does a couple of warriors have? Our country is at war. We're looking for mercenaries, and we've heard about the courage of the Northmen. And to kill giants. Don't forget the giants. Yeah, we're at war with giants in parts. Well, you'll find no giants here. I'm looking for fighters. All fighters here are loyal to the crown. Although, he kind of like looks around. Perhaps you may find some fighting men, if the coin's good. Keep your nose out of trouble, though. You'll be Anything, watched. Any suggestion where I should start? Like, I'm gonna try to keep my scheme, my uh, 
Alibi Most travels make their way to the alehouse. That's what I figured I would start. Thank you, my good man. I'm gonna tap him on the shoulder and proceed yeah. off to the With one hand on the on the uh, the grip of his sword, he kind of he and his men part to let you through. I proceed. I walk confidently to the nearest alehouse. Gotta wait for my friends there. You all migrate to the ma the alehouse. Yeah, and as. Yep. Uh, Jero passes the retinue of guards. He says, "Are you sure there's no uh, joints? They can be pretty tricky." He looks down at you and he says, "Believe me, dwarf. If there were giants, someone would go on a quest to kill it." All right, just uh, if you, just making sure. Just uh, keep an eye out. They are tricky, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm a Northman, so hi. He greets you in Northman, which I don't think you actually know. Nope. <laughs> Score. And before uh, I get off the boat, I just uh, I mutter something about spirits and then ancestors and then cast disguise self. Okay. What do you turn into? Just a human version of yourself? Yeah, but a little bit more thorough than last time. I, I kind of like mate, retract the mate. jaw. <laughs> I retract the jaw a bit, hide the tusks, and. Uh, no longer change the skin tone. Got it. <laughs> uh, but uh, Jero's gonna once done talking, he's just gonna wave as he goes by and says, "Hi, hi, do, hi." He just greets all the guards and then continues on. All right, you guys can hear a pair of them talking in Northman and kind of laughing at some joke one of them made. And then you guys eventually make your way to the alehouse. It's a short distance from the piers. It's the it's the large, prominent building. Um, it's kind of built into two levels. Uh, as again, you're on a pretty steep um, rise. All right. Um. There is a a bar um, on both levels, and there's plenty of staircases to take you up to the second level. And it's kind of like all open. So you can kind of see up into the second level, and if you're at the second level, you can see down into the lower level. They're not on top of each other, and they're more like, like that. Oh, it's just like a balcony almost. There's yeah. A okay. Okay, we're gonna try to find a quiet spot. I'm gonna give one gold piece to the innkeeper so that he brings four or five meals. He looks down at uh, it, it, and he looks up at you, and he's like. Well, Marian currency. Well, since you paid well, I'll take it. Um, I'm gonna give him a second one for his discretion. He just he just shrugs and pockets it. So yeah, we're gonna find a quiet corner on one of the mezzanines. We're gonna eat and then figure out what's our next. All right. Uh, and this alehouse has a different kind of vibe than the ones you're used to. Um, on both levels, in the center of each level, is a large, basically exposed bonfire. Um, and then above it is kind of like a, a very large opening in the in the, the ceiling for the smoke to kind of billow out of. Um, and the place is covered in animal furs and, and old weapons adorning the, the, the walls on, on, a, on mounts. Long house. And also, there is the presence of um, quite a few slaves. Uh, there are male slaves serving drinks, and there are female slaves providing entertainment, and uh, they also seem to be running, uh, you know, there's prostitution in, uh, mm -hmm. at work. So it's a, it's, you guys are kind of <clears throat> culture shocked a little bit. Even Joe Sam, because he didn't spend much time with actual Northmen. No, no, this yeah. is, like, all new to him. I probably also stand out with my metal armor. <laughs> Tin man. It's, uh, is this... This is the... Did we, wait, hold on, did we go to an alehouse back in, uh, still home? In, in the recluse you did. Recluse we did, okay. And it was much yeah. more tame and small compared to this. Yeah, okay. Uh, I just want to make sure that we had. Um, he's like, oh, this is uh, quite different from the alehouse uh, we were at. Uh, 
I must say, uh, I'm kind of curious to taste what the ale tastes like. Uh, I'm a brewer myself. I make ale. Indeed, very, very different. And he's probably half distracted, as he says. It just, uh, is it normal for everyone to wear you know, collars and whatnot? It just seems old. No one else is wearing them. Why are they wearing them? Did they work here? Is that the uniform? Um, to, do not mention them. These are like sensitive subjects. They practice slavery. These are possessions more than human. And as you say that, one such slave brings you your drinks. And he says something in Northman um, because he probably doesn't speak your language. Um, but he he imply he seems to imply that the food you ordered will be coming later. I'm gonna not just wait and wait until he's gone until they speak further. Oh, he does not linger. <coughs> All right. Uh, we've got nobody speaking Northman, right? <laughs> uh, that's no. a good question. Does anyone speak Northman? No, I don't. Uh, I don't think so. No. Let me check my language. It's been a while. So. Dwarven or Kish and Eastern man, Eastman. So and there, there are no similarities between Eastman and Northman, or very. Few. Um, I'm gonna go. This is Yagshir, so their dialect might incorporate some um, Eastman slang, but for the most part, uh, I mean, they're 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 fairly separate languages, different root languages, and all that. All right. You might hear the occasional word you recognize, but out of context, it doesn't mean, mean it doesn't mean much to you. Gotcha. All right. So maybe the first thing is I want to procure. I'm gonna mention that to my group. Like we need some local currency if we are to be uh, more subtle, and then we have a lot of information to gather if we are to to our mission, to accomplish our mission, right? Any ideas from any of you guys, any skills you might have, which could help? I can hunt. I'm gonna look at Romulus, who's supposed to be the brainy one, <laughs> resourceful he's already, one. He's already shuffling through his like spell book, and he's like, um, well, as for the, uh, the language barriers, I, I suppose uh, I do have, uh, a spell that allows me to understand uh, I understand the meaning, the general sense of what is uh, spoken to me in, in whatever language, but I can't I can't speak it back so oh. I suppose I could cast that in uh, uh, listen around but as for the money, I, I have not well, maybe relying on our own senses instead of relying on the local population or gossip. You know that better. you know that the the barkeep speaks Eastman rather well. But yeah, it would be suspicious to go asking all kinds of questions to this guy. But I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him if there's a businessman here in the city which does business with Wyrmeria. So maybe I can exchange. Currency for currency. He kind of um, kind of looks looks across the the countertop at you with kind of a contemptuous stare, and he says, "There's bound to be a few fur traders who make their way down south." And as for your currency, most larger establishes gold is gold, but some people get particular. Your king's face instead of our king's face. You might piss off the wrong people, especially here. Especially mm -hmm. now. That is my concern. I would not want to disrespect. And I'm simply going to nod and uh, go back to my friends, I guess. Right. Unless he has more. As you turn All around right. to leave, um, the barkeep is playing with one of the coins you gave him. And he's like, you know, your coins are actually bigger than ours. You might have overpaid me. I know I did, and I'm going to leave it at that. Well, I hope you patronize me more. <laughs> that 
A really odd it. use of that word in that context. That's yeah, second language. Yeah. Depends on the service, but yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna nod. Alright. Um, yeah, see, so by the time you... When you return to your uh, your chair, it's not long before um, so they bring you out some stew. I'm, I'm gonna look around. I mean, I have a new uh, class feature which allows me to size up people to see if they're stronger or weaker than me on some points, you know, the 7th level uh, battle master thingy. Are you looking for anyone in I'm particular? I'm just gonna look... I'm, I'm looking for the... I'm gonna take a look at the... Uh, whoever appears to be the strongest fighter in the, the place. Okay. I wanna know if he's higher level than me and if he has more HPs than I do. Got it. Alright. Um, what's your hit points? 75. And then your strength? Okay. 18. 18. Alright. But uh, it was level, so I'm level 7. You see a man who has all the look about him of someone who has survived a bear mauling? This is worse than last time. I'm sorry. Mm. The medication, I, I take, took it at take noon, your time. and it, it, take I, your time. it's starting to wear off already. It's supposed to last for 12 hours, but say love you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he, he seems to be as strong as you, um, perhaps less uh, less hit points than you. Uh, and he does seem to be uh, in charge of a band of about a dozen men. Uh, the majority of them look like warriors, and the others... Um, they're wearing like fine tunics, but they all are subservient to this uh, bear mauled man. Okay. Um, and he has a prominently large table in which he and his dozen followers are seated around. And they're, they look like they're celebrating, or do they look serious? Are they talking? Are they playing dice? Or whatever? Um, they, they, they seem amicable with each other, uh, but whenever someone some of the other Northmen get too close to kind of shoot him daggers, and the, the leader, uh, this scarred man, he seems rather, um, it's hard to get a gauge on his, his emotional state, but he seems unhappy. Okay, so that's my sign to take it easy right now. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna take a look around at the people, keep enjoying my meal, and see where that leads us. Okay. Well, as outsiders, um, no one's giving you much attention. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, did, did, this is probably the, the place where they see the most of outsiders. Right. <laughs> That's where they... Um, now, I don't think any of you have had... Um, interactions with Northmen. So you you guys don't really know if this is odd uh, or usual. But beard, that. but he didn't talk. So it's true. You had beard, and he did not talk. So basically, we already know what the Northman is. And the, the last <laughs> Northman you hung out with, he never gave you his name, and you never asked. So. So we're Ron Swanson. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We never talk for 13 years. Best friend I've ever had. <laughs> All right. So yeah, if that leads to nothing else, I guess... Uh... Yeah, um, you guys need to... If you want information, you're going to have to go looking for it. No one's going to yeah. pony yeah, it yeah. up. No, no, no. Uh, I was not expecting it to just drop in my lap. But, right. uh, I, I thought maybe I could go talk to the guy to ask if he was a mercenary or... To look, just get gather local news, but he doesn't seem to be in a amenable mood. So I'm just gonna forego that, and maybe we can like find rooms, take a good night's rest, and then start trying to figure out the guards' rotation in the keep, the weak points, whatever. We just could walk around and stuff for for a starter. Then maybe uh, we'll see where where that leads, right? Okay. Unless anybody else has. Any other idea? This keep that we are supposed to be infiltrating, is it? does it actually have people in it? Because I know you said the Northmen haven't been in it because they think it's cursed. Uh, so Well, the um, the Headless Prince 
he inferred that when his brother rose as an undead, he killed everyone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then, so it's pretty much just uh, the blacksmith guy and uh, Bayhild, right? Like that is supposed to be in there, or do we and believe? The, and the undead brother. Of, uh, oh, so, okay. so it just could destroy the main gate, and people would just look weirdly at us, like they're gonna die. It's not guarded, <laughs> which I thought it was. I mean, that that's the information you have at hand. All right. Uh, what time is it in the day? Like, uh, it is day, evening. Uh, you guys. Evening. Yeah, it, it, it's. It, you guys were basically at dusk when you pulled up. All right. I'm gonna take care of the rooms, and we're gonna enjoy the rest of the night. Okay. You go back to the the barkeep and ask for rooms. Yeah. He looks at you. He looks at you, and he says, "We're all booked up, actually." All right. We're gonna try to find another place. I can make room in the stables for you, if you don't mind the accommodations. I can even bring pillows and blankets, if you don't mind sleeping on the straw. You look like a man who can uh, rough it. Uh, I've gotten used to that, but I would have enjoyed a warm bed, know what I mean? I'll add it to your tab that you've already paid. Boy! He, All right. he, he, shouts over, he shouts over to one of his slaves, and he says... Fix up the stables for four people. Make room and go fetch someone else to help you. I'm gonna throw in one more silver piece for a bath. He looks down at it and he's like, "There's bay. There's the bay right there." Yeah, I I love warm water, right? <laughs> he just laughs. <laughs> Yes, hey boys, I'm a noble. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he just laughs. He doesn't even take your coin. He just laughs and he moves on to the next person trying to get his attention. Okay, I'm gonna leave the <laughs> coin there, but I'm probably gonna head up to the bay. <laughs> as soon as you I'm turn, gonna... as soon as you turn away, one of the patrons like, leans over and just swipes the coin. <laughs> I'm a generous god. All right, that's it up for the night. We're gonna sleep it off and uh, head up for the keep tomorrow. All right, everybody make con saves. Oh, good thing snap. I'm good at that. That's a uh, brawl twenty. Back load thirteen. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna re-roll that with uh, luck. Uh, I wouldn't. Drosan 15 and Drake okay. 21. I'm sorry, um, Romulus 21. So you guys all succeeded. Um, even though you guys are sleeping on uh, horse feed and uh, you got a, 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 a rather uncomfortable blanket and pillow, uh, you guys managed to etch out a good night's rest. Romulus, you want to give me new rolls on your... Right. <clears throat> and just before... Uh... Drove would have drifted to sleep. He has been silent this entire time, just eating, barely speaking. And as you know, we're tucking, settling for the night. He just kind of finally pipes up. Wait, you saying that people uh, property? I don't understand. But the people do not property. Like he has been thinking about this whole time about slavery and trying to figure out how it actually works. Listen, drove on. A lot of people don't like to consider other people be To put it quite simply, they look at someone and they say, you are less than me. And that ranges from calling that person a monster or just mean names sometimes, all the way up to putting them in chains and making them work just Speci because you don't like them. Species are often involved in that. And he looks at Romulus, uh, like, with eyes that basically ask, have you been, you know, mistreated as an orc slash half-orc before? And, yeah. Yes, indeed. Slavery is common in primitive societies. I assume you say that in, from the comfort and shelter of your stable. Uh, we're in the stable. Okay. <laughs> yes, we are. Because yeah, yeah. that's where we were when you started talking. Got it, okay. <laughs> It's just, just old, is old. I've just, what? It's just weird. 
And then he's just gonna roll over and go to sleep. It is barbaric, but there is nothing we can do. I'm gonna make sure I stress this point to Trosen. Well, I, I'm gonna try. <laughs> yeah, you guys managed to etch out a good sleep, and in the morning, um, the there 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 you guys can you guys have been here long enough, and even though you don't speak the language, there is a palpable uneasiness across this entire village. And it seems amplified by the presence of this uh, scarred man. Everywhere he goes, uh, people are concerned. Um, do I see like the scarred man interact with a merchant or anything? I'm going to try to follow him maybe uh, from a very long distance, but you know, uh, no, I'm going to um, try to watch him interact with he seems to have come out of one of these large gathering halls. He didn't stay in the inn. Uh, he came out of one of these like gathering buildings. These kind of and uh, but he immediately started making his way for the alehouse, and his only interactions with the with the people around him, aside from his posse, has been um, rather uh, people getting out of his way. Rather vulgar glares. Okay, uh, I'm I'm gonna find an ERS merchant who's seen the guy just stroll by. Okay. And first, I'm gonna ask him if. Uh, well, I'm gonna look for a fur trader. Okay. If I can. Yeah, you find uh, someone who's got behind him a, a, a large assortment of coats and hats, and uh, he looks up at you. And, and when you address him, he responds in Eastman, albeit, you know, great, not perfect, yeah. with an accent. Um, I'm gonna ask him if he would be willing to exchange Wymerian coin for uh, Jackshirian coin, <laughs> however that's said. Uh, he perks up and he's like, I'd be, I'd be glad to exchange currency with you. I, uh, get, uh, I, I deal in Wymerian coin often. I'm glad to hear it. I wouldn't insult anyone and I almost did by using these coins. I'm gonna give him ten Armory and gold pieces, and I'm no, he looks down. And he's like, like "I'm just a humble fur trader. I don't um, have that quantity." Um, how much would you have? He, he, he kind of pulls out a coin purse and opens it. And he's like, uh, "I could give you a gold." Uh, that's a good start. Keep the ten. I'm gonna take the eight. No, I meant this many. Oh, hey. <laughs> one. Okay. I'm going to give him one. I'm going to take one. Yeah. Okay. And he's like, um, Why, thank you. I'm, I'm new around. Uh, Obviously. I've seen this man, this car man, walk around. Yeah, he you, you point like, to him right as he like makes his way to the alehouse. Uh, he seems quite like the important character. Who is he? He kind of like leans in. He's like, "That's Bjarga Bearborn. He's the Jarl of Alhalder Brigha." Ooh, the, the the Jarl. That's like the leader of this here place. No, nah, no. Nah. He's one of three Jarls. So you operate on a council of leaders. No, we we had a king. But the king's dead. I don't know if anyone told you that. It's coming back to me. Sorry. Well, there's the matter of succession now. And uh, the Jarl there has been demanding the other Jarls meet for them to elect a new king. But the others refuse to until uh, the keep... He gestures with his head up the mountain. And the keep has been claimed. But no one will dare step foot in it. It's cursed, you know. Haunted. Dead men walk. He spits we've, on the ground. We've heard rumors about that. Dead men walking into the keep. Um, has anybody tried to get into the keep and clean it? Well, when the headless prince came down from the keep, twelve warriors went in there to confront whatever evil may lay. Only five returned. They don't speak of it. Where could I find them? 
if I would be so inclined as to hear their story. Well, for weeks they walled away in the alehouse, but uh, they've been getting themselves into all kinds of trouble. I think three of them got killed in duels already. I see. The other pair might still be in the alehouse. You don't know them. Their colors are uh, red and blue. Brothers. Thank you very much, my good man. He nods. And I'm I'm probably gonna buy one of his spells just for the fun of it as a memento. Okay. Um, this would be considered fine clothing. So, if you buy like a a coat. Cool. That's perfect. And it also counts as warm weather gear, or cold weather gear. I mean. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna sport my new coat, my fur coat. It's a big deal. I'm gonna go back to the ale house. I guess that's where my friends are right now. <laughs> uh, where are the trio? Well, we're all we're all might have followed Vaclo. Okay. Because uh, two reasons: a, if uh, Vaclo was looking up for a trader, and if he said so, we're all would have been interested to see what kind of pe- what kind of things these people would trade, expecting as he as Vaclo found fur, food. stuff. And uh, after Vaclo's done his transaction and like uh, info gathering, uh, Varal would probably ask the pelt seller or the pelt trader uh, if he would be willing. If uh, Varal were to bring him pelt, would he be willing to buy them from him? Yeah, he, he nods. He's like, I'm always looking for suppliers, even one-time purchases. If the pelt's good enough, I'll buy it off of you. And Varal's gonna say, uh, I'm not sure how long will stay around, but if I do manage to hunt, I'll bring you my, produ- my products. Sounds good to me. There's not a lot of hunting to be done in the mountains, though. I'm a good track. Um, can you just remind me the name of this card, man? That's the only thing I haven't... Yes, I will it. type it, because uh, it is... Bjarga Bearborn? Bjarga Bearborn, that is it. Bjarga, that's it. Alright. I will actually add him to your journal. Why not? Add away. Because I'll draw a mustache on. (laughs) You can't do that, you know. You know. And while you're doing that, uh, Dro would be spending the time... uh, Going about the town, or village, sorry, asking people two questions, uh, or trying to figure out two things. One, um, trying to get some information on the castle, and if there was any people in it, other than, you know, the undead. And two, trying to figure out how expensive it is to buy a person. Um, nice. Uh, make a I'd like persuasion to... check. Okay. This will this will gauge if you're able to find someone who speaks to the language and how well you're able to converse with them. Well, I was going to say uh, I want to follow him and uh, cast two spells, disguise self, and comprehend languages, so that he can actually understand what they're saying, even okay. if well, on, on myself, so I'm translating for. Okay. Him. Okay. You're able to find a few people who speak Eastman. Um, they tell you that uh, the keep well, is actually, um, as far as keeps go, it's less than 100 years old. It was, uh, it was built by the first king. Um, the late... What was his name? Starts with an N. The, the late Nithadr. King Nithadr. He was, he, his line has not always been king. In fact, you learn that the, the way they do things is when a king dies, a new king is actually elected from among the, the Jarl's families. So they elect one person from their families to become the new king. Um, and it's got um, a, a few... Is it signaled by different colored smoke that they release? 
Unfortunately, no. Sorry. No. <laughs> uh, they, they have a few... Uh, the, the, the highest um, tower is four stories tall, so the keep itself is at, at most 50 feet at its height for roofs and whatnot. And yeah, it's built onto a shelf in the mountains with its back to the air. It only has one viable entrance. Uh, you learn that when the uh, when the warriors uh, came to the castle, they found that the, the the gates were thrown open and no one had bothered to close them. And they did not close them when they left. So the door is wide open, but no one is willing to go in. That's not spooky at all. Okay, and for the second part, about how to how much it costs to buy someone? You uh, find out that perhaps disheartingly, it's actually pretty cheap to buy a person in these parts. Okay. You also learn, uh, because you rolled so high, that most of these slaves are um, from two countries, both neighboring Lemuria, although your character may not know that. Um, they are from Elgrad. A lot of them are from Elgrad, and then a few of them are from Talvia. Um, I, Vakla would probably know this, that. I mean, they're not one. They're all Eastmen, definitely. Like, the slaves are all Eastmen. Uh, actually, there might be a few Northmen slaves, like the one you encountered in the tavern. Um, Northmen uh, enslaved their own. They're thralls. They're thralls, exactly. Okay. Uh, learning that they're cheap, he's just like, oh, it's, uh, it's, it's not expensive to buy someone. Just seems really old that, you know, people are as expensive as, like, six of grain. And he just seems really, like, down, <laughs> having learned this. It's like, and, but uh, he'll be, he'll say to the person, like, all right, well, uh, thank you for answering my questions. It's as sad as it was. Um, yeah, I'm a Northman, so bye. And he's just going to turn. Okay. Oh. Romulus hesitates at that at that particular person for a moment and says, oh, "What what did these people do to be here? Is it a, a purchasing thing? Where they are they war captives? Or? The thralls? Ah, uh, well, usually when uh, when when warriors." take a village, or hamlet, um, you know, any children, or women, that, uh, they're able to nab, those become thralls. Any Northman that becomes a thrall, uh, has foolishly reneged on an oath, or failed to make payments. Right. Right. And he, he, he just says, Thanks for the the info. Um, and turns around and catches up with Drosan, like and like reaches down and like pats him on the back. It's okay, bud. But I just don't understand. Like, why would you want to own someone? It's just weird. I mean, he's just like flabbergasted. Do, people will do anything to express hatred. And this is one of those things. So if I to own something, you have to hate it? I don't hate my axe. I own it. No, it's just these people, they hate the people that they're buying. They hate them as a concept. And so they they do this to them, not only for their own convenience, but just to <laughs> show them that they are below them. And he says that and his teeth bare and mm, angry. Uh, I, I have to say, uh, it's uh, rather old. Uh, I prefer dwarves. We don't, we don't do a lot of that. Um, must, be a, must be a big people thing. Not all big people. Do we have this good? At least there's some good big people. And then he's going to get distracted by something shiny. All right. Well, eventually, <laughs> you guys will regroup at the ale house. <laughs> or somewhere on the streets, as it might be. Sweet. Uh, 
So, uh, uh, Vecto, did you learn anything? Uh, I, I learned some stuff. I've learned a bit about the locals and about the keep. I think there are some people in the hill house we might want to speak to. And did you learn anything on your side? Uh, yeah, uh, the gate's open, so we don't have to worry about opening it, so it's pretty easy. Uh, we can just walk right in. Um, I, I learned that um, that, uh, they, that it's not too big, so if we did, if we did have to scale the walls, which we don't, it uh, wouldn't be too hard. Um, that it's pretty young, so it's not going to be crumbling apart, so we don't have to worry about walls collapsing on it, which is a good thing. That um, is good. Also, uh, apparently people are cheap to buy, which... It's kind of odd, but it's interesting. Yeah, prisoners of war, they come cheap in this day and age. You can see it's pretty like, not, uh, that's a normal fact of life for Vaclu. <laughs> he doesn't, he brushes it off quite easily and he heads to the ale house. He's gonna say like, I wanna learn more about the threat we might find inside, and then we shall need it head on. Are you with me? He's going to look at all the others. Yeah, right, right. He's yep. on his head is somewhere else. You yep. also notice that uh, Vaclo has his hand on the pommel of his sword a lot more, a lot lately. He's almost always clutching. So he heads to the hail house with uh, the tournament stepped his hand on his sword spot. We're all will follow the group, obviously. Yeah, uh, Dro will definitely follow Vaclo as he seems to be the talkity one and actually the one with money. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I interrupted you though. Uh, you were about to say something, I think, right? Yeah, he would have started to say something, but then think better of it and just follow. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, you head into the alehouse. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna look for uh, anybody co clothed in red and blue and probably drunk out of their mind. Okay. Well, at this point, the alehouse is not very busy. Uh, so a quick skate of the room shows you two brothers who uh, it is well in well morning well and truly early morning and they've already got themselves uh, pints for the pair of them and they are wearing sashes of um, of checkered um, red and blue okay so I'm gonna go to the innkeep I uh, no, uh, well yeah I'm gonna get uh, a nail a mead for myself I'm gonna join the brother at the brothers at the earth. Okay. As you sit down, uh, one of them like kind of jerks up and he says, The fuck are you want, hunchback? <laughs> I'm not gonna react to this uh, to this pun, but I'm gonna be like, I just wanted to drink with two survivors and I'm gonna take a swig from my, my cup. Well, you found us. The other, the other one looks up at his brother and says something in Northman, and they have a brief exchange. It seems that only one of the brothers speaks Eastman, and the other one is kind of confused at what's going on. Okay. Uh, and uh, finally, the one who speaks Eastman turns, and he's like, What, you want to hear some grand tale about how all my mates died? I wanted to hear tales about how you survived. Well, there was no honor in it. My brother and I and a handful of others, we just... He kind of looks, looks into his drink. We just turned tail and ran. What did you find in there? He looks up at you, and his eyes start to bulge. He says, dead men walking. All of the servants, all the guards. Shambling. The flesh rotting off their bones. All of them, too many to count? How many were there? I don't know. I don't spend too much time at the keep prior. Twenty, maybe? I see. Thirty? 
more than we can handle. I saw good warriors get eaten. And he looks back into his drink. How many of you were there? Twelve, I've heard. Is that true? Aye. And five of us made it back. Limping back with no honor. Just for my own, uh, just before we continue on, there's like hardly anyone in the the alehouse, so we can pretty much all hear this. Yeah, in point, in fact, no. aside from the brothers, probably the only other retinue in like in, in the at least in the lower section is the um, um, Bearborn and his and his company. Okay. Is he within earshot or? No, he's on the far side. Okay. Remember, this alehouse is rather large, much mm -hmm. larger than yeah. any you've probably seen. Uh, so he's and got like a long table to... at the other end of the of this section of the alehouse. Okay, so from there I think I'm not gonna get much more. I mean, is there anything else you can remember besides the overwhelming numbers? And I'm gonna exaggerate as if I was like totally overwhelmed at what they're retelling. <laughs> anything else? Any weird phenomenons? Any voices? Anything you've heard? Um, I'm gonna ask you to make a persuasion check just because you're you're prime mm -hmm. at this point. So. Yeah, they, they they're probably not. They don't want to recall this thing. So persuasion. Sixteen. 16. All right. Uh, he looks at you, and he could tell like you're drudging up bad memories. But he sighs, takes a big long sip, with 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 you know foaming ale tribbling down his beard and he slams it on the counter and he says the prince slog fitter I fought at his side on two different raids but now he's a drogger and at the, at the word his brother spits I probably know this from my history proficiency drogger like alright yeah go ahead and roll history 15 um you know that the Draugr is a Northman myth. Um, it, it is a man that has risen from the dead and has supernatural powers. I've played Skyrim. Okay. It's probably different than Skyrim. <laughs> I've never played Skyrim, but it, it, it's probably a little more powerful. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You've never played Skyrim? Yeah, I, uh... My Get friend... out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. My friend let me borrow Morrowind. And I played it for like an hour, and then I never wanted to play Elder Scrolls ever again because I was utterly bored. So sorry. <laughs> I've started with Red Guard number sorry. two, I'm worst game I've ever played. <laughs> you should give it chance uh, at uh, Skyrim. It's like the arcade version of Morrowind. So good storyboard, fun game. Anyway, that's not side. Yeah, Morrowind was still good with mods, but let's continue. <laughs> well, I was on like the console, so. Um... Maybe that maybe that sullied it, but yeah, I don't remember being too impressed. And you shouldn't. I loved Morrowind on the console, so fuck you both. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm a PC like snub, so yeah, I'm always gonna agree with. Console is bad. Anyway, I mean, um, if I want to get Skyrim, it's been it's been you know republished eight times, right? So I'll have options. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have high def. <laughs> I'll be able to play it on your dishwasher. <laughs> nice. Well, anyway, that's all right. That's uh, that I'm, I'm pretty much done with the brothers. I guess I'm gonna like give them a nice warm meal before they go suicide themselves as their. Um, your 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 act of generosity seems to have insulted them. So there's Do that. you want to fight? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, all right. You get the impression it is, that it is custom in Wymeria to pay yeah. You get the you get the impression that Northmen are not that. charitable people, on any level. Yeah, I, I I did a faux pas, but I'm not gonna be apologetic. You know, okay. I'm just gonna explain why. Got it. They just kind of like the one who speaks Eastern just kind of like like shakes his head and looks down at the stew and has a real war with himself on whether or not he's going to eat this free meal. And that's I would almost them. insult them further by giving them a gold piece, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. All 
right, so I would be ready to head for the keep if we've got like I'm guess I'm guessing we're still in the morning. Uh yeah, it's about like ten AM maybe at the latest. I'm gonna let the, my friends know that I'm ready and to come and see me when they are. I'm gonna be sharpening Spirit Weaver at my old. Oh, and for you, for the players, I forgot about this. Um, I I actually made you guys a uh, a handout with all the write ups of all the names and the and the actual story. I probably should have showed this to y'all before the session for those of you who missed last week. But <laughs> there it is. My hmm. oh. so you guys can kind of crash course on this. Um, also, it has all the names written down, so you don't forget. I know, you know. Bay Hill, like you said. <laughs> okay, so I've heard those. Oh, thank God. Nice. Gonna have a good, hard look at it on the break. Um, Dro will make his way over to Vaclo as he's sharpening his blade and says, uh, uh, maybe we should hire these uh, brothers. Um, it seems like they could turn into some sort of wolf or animal. The two brothers I was just talking to? You yeah. can really see that he's puzzled <laughs> about... Yeah, I, 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 I was listening, uh, just because uh, nothing better to do, and it seems like they they told you that they turn tail and run, so, I mean, it means they turn into an, a, a wolf, or an, oh, a dog, yes, and, that, and ran. That is a Wyvarian expression. Uh, but... We, we say the humans turn tails like dogs when they flee. You know, dogs, they have no honor. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower my voice at this point. Have you ever talked to a dog? I haven't. Then how do you know they have no honor? Just seems pretty blank well, of a statement I, to make. I, I've seen Shugel, so you know that a lot of can be expected from El Tiago's. El Tiago's. <laughs> He's just gonna slowly back away, giving you the <laughs> EY. I mean, in fact, I, I, I've watched the episode, and Vaclo probably was as weirded out as Trosan was with, uh, with Shugo, El Diago. So, yeah. With <laughs> El Diago. No, Trosan, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Vaclo misspoke. It, it was actually. Uh, we say that they turn tail and run because they flee. They flee, and dogs have fleas. All right, oh that my makes God. sense. It checks it, out. It makes it all sense, actually. Yeah. yeah. That, that's just gonna that. raise an eyebrow at Romulus, but say nothing else. Yeah, that, that makes it all sense. I can see that now. I was just talk about they have no honor. It doesn't talk to dogs. Like, how do you know they don't have honor? I mean, obviously, Shugo is a strange case because he is evil, but. <laughs> He's evil. <laughs> Not old dog, so she go. So I mean, it's kind of racist, but all right, okay, makes a lot of sense. Thank you, but, uh, but, Romulus. But have you talked to dogs? Maybe they're all shugo. I, I've talked to dogs. Yeah. Okay, so In they're wolves? not. Okay, you. you <laughs> all right, it no. checks out. It checks hey, that's out. That's why sh uh, shugo freaked him out. He talked to other dogs, and they were not like him. So do you guys want to make the climb up the trail to the keep? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Uh, the entire time, uh, Dro is going to be affixing the the skull that he wears as a helmet, and also like holding his battle axe in his hand, just staring at, going, "I hate you! Oh, I hate you!" I was going to ask the marching order, but then I realized if we're doing two by two, I know what it is. Vakli, you should probably have hit points. I should. I always... My roll 20 my is current... up again. Hang on. I always clear my current HPs instead of putting, up, putting them up to max. So that's why. I still use that as a normal pen and paper character sheet. So... Mm -hmm. Strike it out. Do 
you guy, are you uh, are you on the stream? Uh, on the stream, no, but I can be in like two seconds. All right. You want me to do maps and talk? Please. Okay, how's that look? Decent enough. Here you go, and I'm gonna go off of stream because now I've seen things. <laughs> You've seen things? Oh, I've seen things. He's traumatized. Alright, you guys are on the battle map, yeah? You arrive at the entrance of the keep. Uh, the doors, there are two sets of double doors, and they are swung wide open. Um, you guys, as you approach the keep, you, two things strike you. It is eerily quiet, and it stinks of rotting meat. Do we hear moans? No, we you hear nothing. Because I, I can kind of see those on the battle. Yeah, you kind of, through that window, uh, through those windows, I should say, you make out what appear to be humanoid shapes. All right, so I'm gonna get my sword out, the shield, and I guess I'm gonna proceed ten feet ahead to see. I'm gonna be watching the walls and the ceiling for any kind of, yeah, exactly. Uh, so we all see the kind of like figures through the the windows. Yeah, if you can see a token. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Uh, Jero is going to call out then. Uh, hello, uh, just uh, come here to, uh, you know, uh, rescue you. You in there? Alright, well, as the two of you march up, you see through these arrow slits um, men. And they look like guards, but they look off and wrong. You can't quite make out much, however, you do need to roll initiative. Mm hmm. Okay, well, they're going last. Oh, wow. Oh, no, that's not what I want to do at all. And me, I keep wondering why it's not working and should help if I click on my token and I can roll it twice due to my level 7 I believe let me check my class I know barbarians eventually get advantage yeah uh, I think it's only advantage. one of the archetypes and... yes and it's the one I have oh. thus I have 11 what a way to start with this new skill Okay, Romulus, uh, you have initiative. Okay. Um, okay. Fine, then. Wait. Yeah. Just, I just rush out straight into the center. Alright, Because nope. I... To your east, you can see plainly inside uh, the covered stable... There is a, a what remains of a man. Uh, most of the flesh has rotted off his face, and um, he sort of has a slunchedness about him. Um, interesting. I need to check my bot. I'll do that after the stream. <laughs> okay, and this is. This man is standing. Or standing, yeah. He's upright like... and he's kind of hunched over, and he doesn't have any weapons on him. You said that was to the the east. Yep. Down right there. Got it. Okay. And knowing, for a fact, that undead are generally a bad thing. It's true. I've heard that. <laughs> uh. I go ahead and launch a good old classic firebolt at him without, without really saying anything. Just, I'd, I'd like to explain my reasoning real quick. Drosson started yelling into the courtyard and uh, Romulus immediately thought, oh no. 
Um, okay. That is a hit. That one right over there. All right, you burn off a significant portion of its torso flesh, revealing um, defunct muscles and his exposing his rib cage. Uh, you've nearly destroyed it, but it doesn't. It's not down. Or yeah, that that quite confirms it. Undead here. All right, you done? Yes. All right, draw Wait. soon. Yes. Okay. Uh, he is going to. Uh, walk forward to right here, which is his full movement. And he really doesn't see anyone, so he's just going to... Hold on, let me just make sure he doesn't see anyone. Oh! Uh, this guy over to the east is the one that is, like, exposed, like he just firebolted. Yep. Okay. Kind of smoking. Yeah. Uh, so seeing that his eyes go wide as I roll something real quick. Okay. Uh, and while you see his, when he sees this undead man, like you can see, like at least it's like, <laughs> like he's trying to hold back uh, vomit. And he manages to kind of like swallow it down. He says, "Yeah, is it? Oh my God, this is is he's oh, do they always look so disgusting? This is the first time I've actually uh, seen uh, an undead. Is are they always so? Uh, he's like breathing hard. Like it's just, I, mean, I must say, I've, I've never really uh, fought a man before. So this is going to be new. Snap out of it! You got you have moves, right?" Uh, uh, like, uh, like my old uh, teacher, Jager. Yep, yep. I knew that was <laughs> Vaxel's gonna shout like, "Brace yourself! This is the ugly side of war." <laughs> Vaxel, um, post child for not helping. <laughs> <laughs> he is going to. Um, he's going to. <sighs> He's going to take a defensive because he's trying to process everything. And I, yeah, I don't know what he's going to do right now. So, yeah, just a defensive as he's just like taking in everything and is like trying to not throw up from seeing a desiccated corpse. So you're dodging? Yeah. Okay. Varal. Okay, so Varal probably can guess that his sword won't fit through that. <laughs> no. Uh, a shame, really. Look, look uh, around. There must be a way in. So one, two. Oh, okay. You can okay. hop up those ledges. It's difficult terrain. Yeah, but uh, these guys. I want to leave these guys alone. So two. Oh, I was a two. Yeah, three. D does I feel like he can squeeze out of there? Yeah, that's a doorway. Okay, so then I have one guy there, one guy there. A bunch of guys there. I don't know where the entrance is. Uh, ah, Vaxo can deal with these guys. Uh, and then we have a bunch of guys there that might come from the north. So I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna stay here and ready in action. Strike at whoever comes within range. That is enemy, obviously, not just whoever. <laughs> okay. Not Vaxo, please. Vaxo, you are up. All right. So. I'm gonna first move here, assess the situation, so that doesn't work, two, yeah, alright, three, four, that's 20 feet, I'm, I'm gonna get their attention, five, I'm gonna stay there and bang my sword on my shield, ready in action, attack the next thing that comes close to me. That is an enemy, of course. Okay. Speaking of enemies, it's their turn. All right. One, two. Verl, you want to use your reaction? Yes, please. Okay. Weapons, long sword, versatile, because I'm using it both hands. 
Attack, roll. Uh, I didn't attack recklessly, so. Alright. You uh, lop off a chunk of flesh. If it were a man, it looks wounded. And uh, since it's my attack action, and I get two attacks per attack action for that one, is that. Can I attack again? I'm not I think so. familiar with the rules. I'll have to brush up on that. But sure. Are you giving it to me? or Yeah, yeah okay. go ahead. Okay. It makes it needs a it's gonna make a constitution saving throw. It's saved. So you slice its throat and its head cranes back and then it snaps forward and keeps coming at you. Okay, we're all gonna stand like firm, but if anybody behind him you can see his muscle going like Yeah, no, I don't like that. Like things should die. You Alright, so it drops down. It jumps down, and then immediately kind of swipes at you. Uh, it got a 17, which is a hit. Uh, hit it. Yeah. So you're going... I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to copy that. It's going to happen a lot. You take 15 bludgeoning damage. That's Can the I wrong one. That, that is the wrong one. I'm sorry. That is That is the ogre zombie. Thank God you uh, right. on that. So you take seven bludgeoning damage. Okay, I can take that. It's a tickle. Okay. One, two, three, four. Uh -oh. One, two. Who do we lose? Vaclo? Vaclo. Three. And then this one's going to jump down and paw at uh, Drosan, so he has disadvantage. Is a 15 a hit? Uh, I think that actually hits. Let me just double check. Yeah, I have a 14 AC. Okay. You get slammed for 6 bludgeoning damage. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then these guys are going to dash. Alright. Uh, I'll hold off on that since he's... I don't... Is he still in game? I'm back. Okay. All right, so more of these uh, guys now going um, start shambling out of the uh, sh uh, the stables. This one comes running up. You you want to use your reaction? Yes, I do. All right. Get the sheet up. Uh, I'm gonna attack. Spirit Weaver. Okay. You. 14 does a hit. Yeah, right. you slash into his meaty, rotten flesh. Appetizing. Second attack? Uh, well, that's a reaction action. That's all I can do. Right. Okay. Can I attack twice? I don't know. I let Veral do it, so go ahead. I'll I look it up. Oh. It's the answer is no, but you let Veral do it, so. Okay, right, I'll let you do it, and then we'll go uh, back. We'll go to the I one won't. attack. It's a it's a reaction. It's like an attack of opportunity. That's what I. Do. Well, I let Veral do it, so you can go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, I just Should remember we... the rule. I would have went either way. It did not matter. That's fourteen damages. Right. He needs a sixteen. Okay, so this one does. Uh, fall lifeless. Alright. This one's gonna come up and take a swipe at you. Wow, he hit. Uh, that's the total? No, that's not the total. That's just the okay. 20. Cool. It'll, it'll take too long for me to type out every single uh, yeah, yeah, attack. Yeah, I remember. So, you take two bludgeoning damage. Okay. Like I dashed, and then... But wait, there's more. From down the stairs at the second level, uh, which is kind of like on a rise, much like the, um, the alehouse, more begin to descend upon you. Well, I can see why they turn tailed and run. I think that's it for this one. Yep, all right. 
Romulus. Mm. For all, we'll actually need to go all out. That's going to be interesting. And if y'all know a ruling that I'm foggy on, feel free to, you know, correct me. It, uh, I, I don't like to backseat to DM. Yeah, but I like to follow the rules, so... You yeah, no, it's something I would bring up after the game. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, then, uh, backseat me. When I'm not sure about the rule, backseat me. <laughs> <laughs> um... I'd like to cast a fireball centered. Oh, I feel that's gonna hurt. If I move here, oh, hang on. If I move here, that doesn't take me out of range of this guy, so he doesn't get an opportunity attack. Correct. Okay. And center it right here, with its range of or with its radius of twenty feet. All right, so it's gonna hit. Um. Okay, that's not what I meant to do. Yeah. Okay. So it's gonna hit everything to the right of a roll. Right. Okay. I may have drawn some dots that I can't seem to delete. Okay. Dex saves. They're good at that. Wink. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six times. Oh, I rolled an extra two. Okay, they have failed, so they take 24 fire damage, so I need to... Oh, they cannot succeed that save, so they are all toasty, toasty zombies. Toasty coyote? I'm going to move this guy just so I can delete that dot, and I'm going to do the same over here. I accidentally drew some dots, and they're going to drive me crazy. And while you do that, uh, Jake and just so I can prep my turn, uh, do we hear more than what we see right now coming any from any? Uh, no. Okay. All right, Josan, is that it? That wasn't Josan. I'm sorry, Romulus, is that it? Um, I'm gonna say yes. Okay, Josan, it is your turn. Um, so is it the? Undead creature in front of him, like directly to his north, that attacked him. Yes. Uh, seeing as he just got attacked, he's like, uh, "If if you don't mind, just uh, turning around and leaving. Uh, I don't want to hit you." And then getting like this like undead response, he's like, "All right, I guess you leave me to no choice." And once again, he's going to kind of like reach out with his hand, uh, his left hand, and kind of dig into the fingers of his right hand, pulling them up as like these. As if he's peeling away his skin, and the the black claws appear in his uh, from his own fingertips, and he's going to rake out with his primal savagery. I choose you. Yeah, that hit. You dissolve a swath of flesh with your uh, acidic claws. It's a cool cantrip. I probably asked this already. Uh, that's from Xanathar's. Yeah. Uh, and uh, with that, he's just going to, like, because he's dissolving flesh, he's going to once again uh, fight the urge to puke and then just ready himself as best as he can. Okay. Voral. Okay, well, if I don't hear anything else, there's still some trouble going on. So Voral is simply going to age, but he's not going to go frenzy. Okay. And uh, give me a second. I just need to update my sheet. I should have actually done that. I'm an idiot. Uh, melee damage roll two. Range nothing. Spellcasting nothing. I get resistance. I don't think I get anything else. Uh, to last for one minute. Oh yeah. Remove one rage. Perfect. And we're good to. Go. So now, I will attack. I'll move here. And uh, I don't know who to help first. I'm I, I'm gonna go with this guy since he can, he can attack both. Okay. And uh, reckless attack, I get advantage. But keep in mind, anything attacking me also gets advantage on me until my next turn. Okay. You lop his head off. 
It is re-dead. Fuck, I just closed my sheet, hold on. Okay, uh, I'm gonna use my other action. You know I'm, I'm already close to him. I'm gonna attack this with my other, my other attack. Okay. You hit. Okay, you, you, you carve into his dead flesh. Uh, I don't have a bonus attack because I didn't frenzy, so I think that's pretty much it for me. Correct. Yeah, that's pretty much Vaclo, you are up. Alright. So, I'm kind of trying to hold off the horde here. I'm gonna move there. I'm gonna hit the one north of me. Okay. Is that your swole meter roll? Yeah, I'm gonna use Lucky to reroll. So that's a 9 plus 9, that's 18 to hit. Yeah, you hit. You carve it's into gonna him. It's be 11 slashing damage. It doesn't die, right? It does not die. I'm gonna hit it again. 19 for 12 more. Okay, you, uh, you, you split its skull. And it falls over, cadeted. It's cadeted. Uh, I'm gonna move there. Rawr! I'm gonna take a defensive stance. That doesn't mean anything. Sure. I'm done. All right. These five guys are gonna take turns slapping you. Oh my good lord! Uh, so um, you have I'm gonna repost the first one that misses. Okay. They need a 17 on the die to hit you. So the first one missed, we'll do this guy to the north. Alright, right now, repose. Uh, 14. For 14 damage, alright, you carve into him. 14 to hit, and 14 damage, alright. Next one's gonna try to slap you. Next one. Next one. Next one. Alright, one of them finally uh, punches and dents your armor enough to like give you a bruise. You take 3 bludgeoning damage. <laughs> I do not seem to mind it that much. I expected more. All right. Uh, this is guy is going to drop down and take a swipe at uh, Drosen. It's going to hit Drosen. You take four bludgeoning damage, and this one Super. is going to take a swipe at Romulus. Hit because this is Romulus. Uh, taking four bludgeoning damage, Romulus. And the rest are yeah. double dog dead. Remlet, Romulus, it is you. Okay. It just occurred to me that the turn order is a little cut off. There we go. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something. That would be why. Well, yeah. It is your turn. Something that might be <laughs> considered not smart. Um, I I have a that so Raven moment, and my like, it goes, the camera goes into my eye, and I actually Varal escaping a flaming death, and I cast fireball centered on or not Varal, uh, Vaclo, centered on Vaclo, and I use my natural twenty foretelling. Really? Throw. You're gonna use a you're gonna use your um, nat twenty there? Do you you don't really need to use it there? Oh yeah. yeah. Hang on, I was thinking of my own deck, so <laughs> I mean uh Vacto's yeah, got gonna, a couple this, of ways to He's got a shield, well, like he's okay. good on decks. Take that scene back. It's okay. actually I just yell I just yell the back of well, Watch uh, out, buddy! Fireball! <laughs> and you take a hit as I'm launching the fireball. Where are it's you? Where is your be... center point? On Vaclo. On Vaclo? That'll hit. Or, ooh, one above him. One above him. One above All him? Right. Okay. So that's that a very you. nice DC for me. Um, I can add my shield's AC bonus to my dexterity saving throw. Real quick, though. Yeah, that'll hit you, Romulus. Oh. Then one one above and to the left. 
Okay. Just the, the one that makes it to where it will hit all of them, not me. Got it. All right. So that's five Details. decks. Doopy, doopy. Fourteen. Plus, plus my shield, that's fourteen. I do make the save. <laughs> okay. And does your, does your shield, what does it do with the damage? you take half still, or...? Uh, well, I have to use a reaction action to be able to shrug it off altogether, so I already did that. I cannot, so I'm going to take uh, half. That's 12. No, you, you you haven't used it. You used it last round. Oh, um, no, you used repost. On my repost. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to take 12 so damage. It 12 damage. Turn order, doesn't it? Uh, it restarts on his turn. It restarts at the, top, oh, okay. at, at the start of his turn. Um, so, uh, 14 decks. Three of them saved. Uh, so this one is... Uh, uh, I'll do the ones that take, take the half damage. Um, it's, yeah. It's all the ones uh, to the left of Vaclo. The ones above and below him took, take the full damage. Which means uh, this one... Actually, they're, yeah, it's, you did 24 damage. Uh, so they are yes. both uh, smoldery corpses. So Vaclo did have time to interpose his shield on the fireball, so it kind of, like, you aimed it at the shield, it, it still kind of burned him off a little. Okay. All done? Mm, that's... <laughs> I'm a one-trick pony, right? All right, Josan, you're up. Uh, seeing as the next one just dropped down and attacked me, he's like, hey, wait, wait, I, didn't, I really don't want to do this, but you leave me no choice. And once again, he's going to claw up his hand and slash out with these blackened, acid-dripping claws of his. Uh, not too happy that he's having to, you know, attack a human target. Acid-dripping, are they, like, LSD coated? Yep. I believe it. Nice. Alright, you, you, uh, you melt some more flesh. It smells horrible. All, okay. all done. Let me uh, let me just do one one okay. thing real quick, uh, just for some uh, flair. Yep. Yeah, okay. And even though it smells horrible, there's now like dissected and chopped up corpses in front of him. He still manages to hold his lunch or breakfast in. Okay. We're all you're up. Uh. Well, I'm still gonna protect these guys. Uh, again, this one that can attack both first. Uh, versatile attack, uh, reckless attack as well. So, because they aren't attacking me, so I might as well enjoy that. Okay. Uh, all right. Once again, it seems it, it seems for a moment that you've you've killed it, um, but it it it, it lingers, refusing to die. Wh which enraged Varal even more. So you hear like this this almost feral voice coming from him, and he goes like, WHY WON'T YOU DIE?! And he hits him again. The Orc's Primal War. Alright, just narrowly, you, you swipe him to the side, and he falls over double dead. And then Veral turns his attention to this guy, but since he's not frenzied, he can't do anything about it. Okay. And that'll make Vako's turn. Right. So it's gonna be same old thing. I'm gonna. So these they made the saves. All those on my left, right? Yeah, they're hurt. Death, they're right? just not dead. Okay, I'm gonna Again. start with the one on top. Ooh, critical hit. Uh, false. Max, <laughs> max, good damage, but. Maximum damage, but not critical. Nice. Alright, he is... <laughs> yep. He is deaded. Alright, not quite max on a critical hit, but I'm gonna keep going down the line. Well, it wasn't a critical hit, so... Oh, not a crit... Oh, <laughs> right, I've... Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Quite bad. laughs> 13 on this. Next one's dead. I'm gonna use a bonus action to shield bash the hell out of the other one. Just for the fun of it. He failed. You knock him prone? Ah, that's gonna be it. Okay. Well, he gets back up. And then paws at you. Missing. Okay. 
And this last one is going to once again attack Romulus, hitting for <laughs> two bludgeoning damage. Watch out. It tickles. It and Romulus, tickles. it's your turn. Can you sound like Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> and I see. I guess I just uh I don't see a need to really use a spell here. Go the old fashioned route and rear my quarter step back and smack at him. Give him a fierce thwopping. A fierce thwop. Alright, that yeah. is a hit. And that is a, a caved in skull. <laughs> bit more vulgar than I would have liked. And I run up here so that uh, Vaclo has some support. Moral support? Emotionally. <laughs> okay, cool. Emotionally. Yeah. Just saying, you're up. Uh, seeing as there's just a swath of dead bodies, re-dead bodies around him, uh, he really doesn't want to step forward because he doesn't want to get that grime on his shoes, so instead he's going to cup his hands and begin breathing into it as that little light appears and opening it up, there's a little flower which he then throws, Mario style, uh, towards the remaining Draugr, and uh, Once again with the flower I Got some flower power, man <laughs> Is the best kind of power Alright, you hit The last Zambi is still standing Done? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Veral, you're up. Uh, Veral's gonna charge the last guy that he can see and just like smack him a reckless abandon. Alright. For the third time, that happened, that's happened only to you. Uh... <laughs> it's still standing, even though it should be dead. Uh, Vaclo's gonna make a comment about how a longsword is not to be used as an axe. Be smarter about it, man. Which is gonna make uh, Veral rage even more. <laughs> Alright, and the last one falls. And uh, <laughs> as it falls, Veral just like hits it, hits it, hits it. Hits it, and when he start, he feels the first hit hitting the ground through the dead body. He stops. Come. <laughs> you sure don't like those? Vaclo uh, was busy. You haven't seen anything of what happened with your trouble. Uh, and we're all like still kind of foaming at the mouth, but now he's wiping it off, and he goes like, "Things that die should stay dead." Um, that we agree. Huh. Well, well, congrats, the two of you re-killed them. So, uh, high fives all around as we continue. Uh, you can see Vaclo still on the edge, waiting for any of the eight surrounding corpses to rise up beside him. And after a few rounds, after a while, he just nods at Romulus and, all right. I'm taking the lead. And at, at the I-5 comment, he turns to Drosan and says, one low five. <laughs> <laughs> that is low. Um, I think I'm going to inspect this place first. Oops, where is the door? What are these? Stables? Uh, um, prison cell? They're like storerooms. Storerooms? I'm going to... Take a quick peek. We're all gonna stand room. here and stay guard in case more come. I'm gonna pat my burn wounds. <laughs> gonna take a look here. All right. When you enter the stables, it it reeks of death, and you hear thousands of gnats. And you see that the horses have been butchered and chunks of them have been eaten. Okay, I'm gonna step out as soon as I can. 
So I'm going to tell well, the others oh. that uh, there's nothing interesting, more, uh, more putrefaction in the stables, and I want to be out of here as soon as I can. This, stair this staircase leads to the battlements, if anyone's interested in that. Uh, we might, yeah, we might want to... I'm sorry, uh, which stair? That one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. Are you all going up? I suggest we take a look around, just to be sure. I'm gonna take a look around inside. I'll, move, to see. I'll move you and Romulus for now, and then if you guys decide it's worth going around, I'm gonna... Yeah, I have the yell for everyone to come up, I'll come up. I, I need to throw you in the abyss. Alright. There you guys go. All right. It's much clearer. Yeah. Just found myself. It, it's like so much bigger. Um. I think there's yeah, there's a reason for us to take this kind of shortcut, or at least high position, which allows us to see things better, right? Sure. Yeah. I'm gonna call the others. Okay. I will whip them over. You guys are kind of... I gotta leapfrog you over here. There you go, let's go. <laughs> so, I'm just gonna comment about how that looks like the keep, but I can't see it clearly myself. Uh, okay, can you describe this structure? Yeah, that's think? definitely the keep. Um, it, right. the the largest tower I I believe is uh, yeah this section is the largest tower it goes up all the way. Um, so this is the four story one. That part of it, yeah. Um, okay. The other part tears off, but uh, this tower on the the right hand side has this large square tower um, that is the high point. It, it's like from here to here, so it's thirty five by okay. thirty going all the way up. So it does look like here at this point. Uh, have you seen my ping? Yeah. Uh, can we get onto the roof easily from there, or is it like on the roof? A, those a stairs go down. Or a, those stairs uh, go down. Yeah, but I mean, from the battlements to there, is there a wall? Is there a oh, higher up? Do we have to climb or? Mm -hmm. If you want to get all the way to the roof, yeah, yes, exactly. you'd have to climb. There, there's no ah, stairs okay. leading up outside of the keep. Nothing that could be used as a ladder around the inner yard? Or... No. And that is a well. I'm going to try to see if it still holds water, if I... Is there anything particular about this well? Uh, it's kind of hard to see into the well. You don't smell anything horrible. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the only way to come back down is where we came from. Uh, no. Uh, there's a st stairwell here, and there's a stairwell that goes down into the keep there. If you're interested. Okay, because I thought there was no way to get from these battlements to these battlements without climbing. Oh, yeah, right. no, you're right, yeah. Sorry. Okay. So, but you could go here. That is connected. Mm -hmm. Do we have any good climbers? Because I have a plate armor, I'm not confident. <laughs> I can climb this tower. Where, where did Vaclo yeah. go? I could easily... I could easily... Uh, Vaclo is south of me. I'm in the tower. Ah, for me he's... Sorry, I had to move you. You were underneath no for all... Yeah, no problem. Mm. Uh, I could climb. Uh, I don't have any heavy armor. No. Yeah, the thing is, we all have to climb or... Yeah, but give me a rope. I'll climb and I'll just pull you guys up at a time. I'd be up for that, yeah. I think I do have a rope. Pretty sure I do. Dungeoneer's pack, yeah, I do have a rope. Yeah, I think they're pretty much every pack, minus a few ones. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, a... I'm, I'm gonna hand you uh, like 50 feet of hemp rope. 
Okay, so are we climbing out there, like up north? Is that where you wanted to climb? Uh, that's what I thought when I first went to the battlements, if there's an easy access to the keep. Is, is it not just easier to go down back where we came from and go through some doors? Where do we, where do we have to climb? It just seems pretty silly if we just walk through it. Well, it depends on the Vaclo's strategy. If he wants to go straight to the head of whatever's causing this, it is possible it's going to be in the... If there's more of these creatures, by going down and going through the keep the normal way, we'll just have to fight uh, our way through waves and waves and waves of enemy. I do <laughs> often favor the head-on approach, but sometimes... An old friend of mine named Gareth used to preconize the subtle approach I've kind of learned from him a little bit. Okay, just uh, assuming we do beat the, the the blacksmith, is it are we not going to have to kill, re-kill, re, -kill, re -kill, I don't know the term, but we're not going to have to do that to the rest of these undead things, these brokers? Right. Well, my idea is that you, you and um, uh, Romulus, y you use magic, right? That, that's what I understand. Yeah. If, if I kill no, you... No, just very advanced fireworks. If I kill you, you won't be able to use magic. Is that right? Uh, I, I, I don't think so. Uh, I've never died before, so... Well, with the assumption that you won't be able to cast magic anymore after you're dead, it is also safe to assume that if we kill the head of whatever is doing this, then it probably won't be able to keep these things... I'm gonna call them things alive. That's as far as I understand magic. At this point, Vaclo turns towards, like, he's probably moved up to. He's gonna. Oh, that's not where. But, like, he, yeah. he's gonna be like the, how we did in that last battle. Haha, <laughs> you remember, right? Cut the yeah. head of the snake. Yes. Is, but, okay, it just. Okay, this just seems like we're doing a lot of work for unnecessary, but I mean, I'm, I'm, this is the first time that I've ever been in a, a keep, so uh, I'll just trust you. Uh, are, uh, are you afraid of heights? Yes, no. Person? No, not at all. Just seems rather old. Uh, I'm, I am worried that maybe if we fall, it might hurt, but I mean, whatever. Yeah. You'll... I'm the only one that's at risk of falling. You, you will have a rope. You'll be able to be pulled up. You won't even have. Yeah, well, I mean, that revolves us holding on to the rope or you not dropping us as you pull us up. Just, I mean, just why is it could happen? Uh, just. Veral's gonna smirk and say, I don't drop people. And if you can't hold on to a rope, there might be some. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. You you will do well, lad. He's gonna say as he pats Trosan in the back gently. I, I just I, I'm expecting to climb, get a rope, and get backstab and drop people just because I said <laughs> Yup. So go up, climb. <laughs> okay, so we agreed on a climbing strategy. Yeah, yeah. I, I trying the front door is what we'd be expected to do. Let's try something else. Okay, so uh, Veral is gonna look for climbing points and attempt. All right, well, you can start there if you want. Uh, however, you see that there's an open door that leads right into the uh, second floor of the keep, right, right, right here. Oh, right there. And then there's stairs leading down to the first floor of the keep. So it would be probably better to use the door. I mean, you can climb if you want. <laughs> okay, I didn't bring my token to this place. <laughs> I did say I wanted to investigate that. I haven't noticed the door. That's classic battle. He's blind under his own. Veral's gonna kind of chuckle and say, "Well, all this for nothing." Okay. We're Please. we're such tacticians. Um. It is about time, and I do really need a bathroom break. Well, I was kind of hoping we'd get to a point of, you know, where we could, you know... Oh, I can, I can hold. I can hold. You can hold. Hold! Hold the line for five more minutes. Uh, after, yeah, exploring, 
After exploring the small part, we're all gonna come back out and say, it looks clear, there's stairs. I see something here. I see like a chest, a bed. Yeah, no, no, uh, clear of enemy. There's other stuff, but it's clear of enemy. Alright, we'll investigate, I guess. We're all going to stand in this big place and just keep watching. Mm. I'm gonna take a look at this room right there. Yeah, this looks to be uh, the room of a uh, of an adult. It has been trashed. Okay, so the chest is open. It's no, the chest is not open. Okay, I'm gonna take a good hard look at the chest. Is there a lock? Yeah, there's a lock. It's built into is it the locked? chest. It is locked. Arr. Is it like sturdy wood and reinforced steel, or is it? Yeah, it's got a steel frame, and uh, the wood looks rather strong. It would take some hmm. effort for you to hack this thing open. And it probably looks. Does it look old? Like, is the steel faded? Uh, it, it doesn't look new. It doesn't look ancient. Okay. It looks worn. I'm simply gonna ponder that while I go join Drosen in the other room. Now, this room's completely uh, tossed. Uh, the chest is smashed open and its contents spilled out across the floor. Nothing of value jumps out at you. And same thing with the chest is uh, closed. No, I just... I just said it's... <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. I missed you. I missed part. I know, you're uh, trying not to pee. I get it. No, it's not that. I, re <laughs> I I think about what you just said, and then I missed the start of your sentence. Got it. <laughs> That's what happened. Um, okay. I'm gonna join back with um, Moral, who's waiting pati patiently and... Well, I mean, he's just watching out for potential trouble. He's listening. If somebody screams, he's gonna run in. He's hoping for violence. Yes, a little, to be fair. He's always hoping for violence. Well, he likes to hit things. It's the one thing he's good at. He can't yeah, unlock that... a chest, he can't cast fireball. He's a bit like Vaku. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually looking forward to show his skills at climbing, and there was a door. He almost wanted to climb anyway. Climb through the door. <laughs> You, uh, maybe you wanted the exercise. If you'd like to climb, we can go back to climbing. <laughs> Guys, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Vaclo's trying to joke with uh, Moral. All right, uh, yeah, these I'm gonna spiral follow stairs, um, they go up and down. Up and hmm. down? Wait, wait. Are they Schrodinger's chair? Wait, chair, chair, wait. Stair. They go up. I'm sorry. They go up. Okay, they're not short against stairs. We open the box. <laughs> they do not go down. They go up. Well, shorting your stairs would be that we didn't know if it would if they went up or down. Not that they went both up and down. We just wouldn't know. All right, is that your marching yeah. order for going up the stairs? If we're nope. going up, are we going up? I'm gonna suggest for all takes lead. Yeah, I'm gonna take lead if we're going. Then nope. I'm gonna take second. Oh, okay, there's some stairs, but all right, all right, okay, okay. If you guys swap places, I'm gonna drag you. Oh, we, we, uh, actually, yeah. you know what? It doesn't matter. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna throw you into the abyss. Into that's, the liquid uh, abyss. Uh, well, that's not the worst. for some reason, oh. I didn't grab Vaclo, and I didn't drag y'all that far. Okay, this is this is gonna be a procedure here. This map is a bit large. We're almost in the abyss. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> okay, marching order is uh, Veral. Veral, Vaclo, Drosan, and Romulus. I'm assuming. Oh. I took one step and we're in trouble already. Alright, you see uh, what appears to be a gaunt, pale faced orc. Who appears? To, he's he has skin, but he's completely, um, like gaunt, and and it looks like he's got Tots. no flesh. 
Yeah, it, 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 it's the shape of his skull. But he's clearly ob he's very obviously an orc, and you would know what an orc looked like, Vera. Um, and I'm trying to remember the alphabet. Uh, he looks Okay, so Romulus, for you who doesn't know what an orc looks like, this is what an orc looks like. <laughs> well, uh, for, <laughs> for all of a sudden the one who sees him right yeah, now. Yeah, the moment I'm the only one that sees him, so that's fair enough. Yeah, meanie. Alright, uh, <laughs> it, it sees you and it doesn't, it doesn't make any aggressive movement, it just sees you, and then it turns to someone deeper into the room and points to you. Oh. Uh, we're all simply going to say, uh, we've got company, and he readies as well. Uh, the creature takes a step back, as if to invite you in the room. Uh, uh, and we're all going to kind of get taken aback. Like, he still has a weapon in his hand, but it's not as ready as usual. He said, we've been involved. I'm gonna pass through. Yeah. Girl. I'm gonna... Well, I'm gonna take one step forward yeah. uh, so people can come and see. And I'm gonna go by the door. And oh, we're all gonna be like, they're actually waiting for us. Dress on. Um, I apologize for our friend. They're they're a bit headstrong. It's it's all right. It's uh, it's it's all new to me, so it's kind of a learning experience. Um. um would you like to take the lead? Uh, Veral's gonna turn to the to the Romulus and Drosan, kind of like uh, uncertain. I say, what's the etiquette when you're being invited to what seems to be an undead feast? Um, a voice <laughs> calls out from within the room, and it um, <clears throat> it sounds, and it says, "Don't be shy." Well, the answer. It wasn't the orc undead guy that said nope. that? Okay. Nope, we're all content. Like, he shakes his head. That's not coming from an undead. Uh, it okay. is a, a pretty coarse, feminine voice. Hey. Fact, I was gonna say, like, let's not be shy, but let's remain on our guards. He's Drosses. gonna, he's gonna motion for all and himself to proceed into the room. Oh dear lord, okay. Josen's gonna turn to uh, Romulus and say, uh, is, it, is it a friend of yours? The, the, the voice, sir? Uh, no, no, the, the uh, gentleman right there. And he's gonna point at the, the orc. Oh. <laughs> no. Um, no, I'm terrified. That thing is a corpse. <laughs> of exactly me. Um... Oh. All right. Okay. Um, Vaclo, as Vaclo enters the room, he's gonna look at the one who seems different than the others. Okay. And he's gonna say, "I'm Vaclo Jose R." At the at the head of this table, uh, surrounded by these undead orcs, is a female orc who is quite living. Um, by Varal and uh, and uh, Romulus standards, she's attractive. Uh, Rhymus, can you see her yet? Halfway. Uh, uh, can you guys start, yeah, kind of get, moving get in the room? Get in the room, get in the room you All guys. Right. So, um, Romulus, you recognize her. I do. You do. Um, she is Nurga, the Bone Shaman, and she is daughter of Blogs. Chieftain of the Burning Wake Orcs. And she smiles at the four of you. And um, that's where we're going to go on our break. All right. Just uh, get it out there. Uh, as we were going in, Drozen would have put a, a hand on the back of Romulus and say, Yeah, it's all right. You got this. And is cast with resistance. Okay. So uh, we will see how this little meeting goes when we get back. Uh, it's probably take around 15 minutes, so the older he gets, the less he wants to go to sleep. So we are going to try <laughs> for 25 after, uh, and 25 we got another, after. another hour and a half of Dire Roll Fire and Blade coming at you. Don't go anywhere. See y'all. All right, we're back. We're better than ever. So, she has not introduced herself, but... Uh, 
well, I was entering the room. Yeah, you've all entered the room. Myself, at this point. Okay. Trying to name all my titles, okay. and then I said, "Here are my companions." While trying to like move here. Okay. Uh, she says, "I am Negra." I'm sorry. That's not her name. I am Nurga, the bone <laughs> shaman of the Burning Wake clan. And these are my boys. And she reaches up and pats one on the on the, what what would be a cheek, more like the jawbone, the skinned jawbone. I'm going to look at Romulus. Um, Ex um expecting him to be able to communicate with her more efficiently. Um, Romulus is going to, first of all, as soon as he walks in the orcs, uh, well, orc zombies, but still, a very, uh, dis he's gonna try to discreetly cast this guy's self on himself to simply remove the tattoos from his back. The uh, burning wake tattoos, they kind of give him away. Okay. Do you like a stealth or anything for that, or is it... Slide a hand. Okay. I'll go ahead and say I cast it either way, so here it is. Cool. And slide of hand. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay. Thirteen. Okay. She doesn't seem to notice. Oh. Oh, sure. Uh. Vakla, what, what do we have, have here? I'm gonna look at Nerga. And I'm gonna ask her, are you the one responsible for responsible for the undead and holy corpses roaming this place? <laughs> I wish. Then tell us what is your purpose here? I could ask you the same question. We're here to clean, cleanse this place. Well, she pushes herself up to stand. Then we have a problem. I've been sent by my father, Blogj, the Keeper of Fire, in order to commission Volunder to make an amulet for him. I can't have you ruining our business arrangement with your ill-conceived adventure. Well, well if uh, if Valinda's so strong, then uh, he 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 can take care of himself. You don't have to have to stop us, and we can be on our way, and he can kill us instead. She she sneers and she looks down at you, uh, and you can tell for a moment she's kind of she takes a moment to be puzzled by your presence, since you're an orc. But she's not gonna let that stop her, and then she just goes, maybe presenting you, your skulls, I may get a discount. He seems to like to make dinnerware yeah, out of wait. bones. Boys, kill them. Initiative. Wait, wait. Is it possible I, that we don't don't do this? Is we talk it out? You know. Uh, no, I can't. In fact, Vaclo was about to rush her while she was talking, but she did give the order before I could interrupt. So. <laughs> I, I was about. To, I, I, I'm speaking with Spirit Reaver, telling it to be ready. Spirit but... Reaver is always ready. Spirit Reaver is like I can smell the magic on her. We're gonna get her. Wait. So, 
he just says out loud, "We're gonna get her." Yep. He whispers. Okay. He whispers it, but you <laughs> probably can hear it. You're kind of used to him whispering to himself. All right, drill in. Yep. Oh yeah, I still got a roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. never help. Oh hello. All right, Josan, you are up. Okay, uh, it's so it's it's not possible that we just talk this out, and not come to violence. It'd be nice not to have to re dead, re kill. I, I don't know the term, uh, but I mean you got all these undead things, and you are you know kind of scary. But I mean you you're alive, I assume, or you're talking undead. I don't know. Are you talking undead? Uh, she's not in the mood to talk. She has a headache. She's got her kill boner on, so. Ooh. I'm um, too excited. <clears throat> uh, did that take my... Works? Did that take my action to try and, like, parlay? Uh, technically talking is an, a free action. Okay. I just didn't know if you would count it, because I was trying to, like, persuade or parlay her to not attack, but, I mean, if it's just falling on deaf ears... Yeah, uh, you I really, do personally really, perceive really... that out of character as Joe Sand being, like, he's been mumbling since the start of the encounter in the background. Yeah. Nobody noticed. <laughs> yeah, there's really no dissuading her. She, she's, she's, going, okay. she, she's trying to murk you guys at this point. Alright, he just... Sees like he he's just, okay I guess no nope. and then he's gonna start beating his chest with his hands and then his legs and going like ah. and he's doing a haka which if any of you know what that is um, good on you um, Maui dance yes uh, and as he does so the little you mean like Maori no, Maori Maori yeah Maori? Samoan mm. no they're different. Anyway, yeah. carry on. Um, and the bone totem that he has around his neck begins to kind of like rattle as he's doing it. And I, or at least Drozan, is going to cast this spell. So and I'm going to target uh, her and the five closest undead to me. To you. Okay. Yes. So I'll say this guy is not targeted. Okay, sounds good. Okay, DC 15. That's so perfect. She has a plus one wisdom, so she needs a 14. Ooh, so close. Oh, I'm glad I read that. Uh, they have a plus zero. So five of them, you say? Uh, yep. They are all slowed. So as he's doing this haka, the uh, room begins to actually chill, and you start to see your breath, and it's like ice or ice starts to form around their bodies in thin layers, slowing their movement, and basically just the visual effects of it. Cool. I'm gonna use this kind of snowflake icon because. Oh. Or the imperial icon. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I mean, if you look at the the slightly larger one, it's definitely a... Uh... The, the snail icon, come on. Yeah, for a slow uh, spell. I didn't <laughs> see the snail until I started... Okay, so they are all slow. So that has their movement. They get a minus two AC. Can't take reaction. Uh, they get minus, or minus two to their reflexes or disadvantage on reflexes. If they cast a spell, it takes an entire next turn. Hot damn. If they, yeah, yeah. Hot damn. Good. So good. Well, and then he's just gonna. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then he's just gonna be like, all right, well, uh, I, I tried to talk her out of it, and uh, I'm not very good at all the bloodshed, so I'm just going to uh, hit the old dusty trail. And he starts <laughs> to back into the room. And uh, I close actually, gonna answer Drosen and say, that is perfect. She's gonna die. Yeah, just I'd rather not see it, so it's alright. Alright, back layer up. And he's gonna hop on the table. Uh, run up. Do they get reactions still? Uh slow spell they don't, because Yep, I can't use reactions. Take of opportunity gladly, but I don't know. 
Yeah. So I've got a. It doesn't say they don't get reactions. It says they can use their action or a bonus action, not both. Uh, right above it's, that, it says it can't use reactions. It's right after the AC. Ah, yes. yes. Okay. So, of course, I'm gonna say it, Spirit Reaver, if the Shaman's blood as much as I can. I'm gonna start with a trip attack. So I do come running up the table. I'm gonna come sliding, sliding down for the rest of the way. Gonna use my legs to scissor kick her in the torso and try to drag her to the ground. You're doing what? That's, uh, oh, you're doing I'm gonna attack. slide Got up it. the table and trip her with my legs. Like I'm gonna kick her into the wall and okay. try to come out on top. Uh, no in window. She's a 13. 16. Okay, she is knocked prone. All right. And so and you do 15 damage to her. Yeah, I'm gonna move up there, keep sliding, come out to my feet, and attack her with upward uh, advantage. To Unfortunately, Romulus, uh, I forgot about this. You no longer have resistance, as that is a concentration spell, and I'm now concentrating on slow. Oops. Um. Well, you you crit her for 18 damage. Uh, so you, you, you bring down Spirit Reaver and you split open her one of her one side of her ribs. Um, nice. she starts Sport bleeding door. profusely, she she is badly injured. And as she wails and like grabs her wound, she's like, Boys, kill him And it's her well, turn. I know, I'm gonna use oh, action surge. Oh, you're gonna action surge, okay. Uh this this bitch <laughs> ain't getting up. Got it. Uh yeah, I'm gonna Use my advantage as much as I can. Twenty-three for ten more damage. Right, she is near death. I'm gonna keep going for one last attack. <laughs> All right. Eighteen um, for thirteen more damage. How how do you want to kill her? Oh my! I'm on the last hit. I mean, she's down on the ground. I've wailed her with two more sword hits. Uh, I'm simply gonna pin her with my shield. I'm gonna drive my sword through her skull and through the floor. Okay. And as a uh, as she sort of twitches, um, her body convulses and black energy comes from her fingers and toes and 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 waves across her body into your blade, and your blade starts to glow with black energy, and she just kind of stops twitching and goes lifeless. I'm gonna keep the pose. I'm gonna take a long inhale, and I'm done for my turn. That moment when your mini boss doesn't even make it to her first turn. <laughs> nice, uh, right. All right. Well, her. Uh, I don't need this book anymore. <laughs> That's kind of sad. I don't need She's this book dead anymore. Dead. <laughs> All right. Her. Uh, her boys are are going to try to avenge her now. Uh, they don't. They, their attack isn't hindered, right? They just can't take bonus actions. Exactly. They can only make one exactly. melee attack. Okay. Exactly. They can only make one melee attack as is. Okay. So, um, <laughs> suffice to say, all four of these guys, hell, all five of these guys converge on you, and they're gonna swipe. They're gonna try to take a bite out of you. Uh, so that's Try. five bite attacks. They have a, uh, oh, they have a plus two to hit. Alright, I'll let one of them do that, and then he's gonna miss. There it is. And now they're gonna switch to their claws, because they're actually much more accurate with their claws. So that's plus four. So 16 are up. One, two, okay. Hey! You take 11 slashing damage, and you need to make oh. a con save. Okay. Uh, which you save. Okay, so that was the third attack. So we got two more. Boopy and doopy. The last one is going oh. to be a hit. Um, I'm going to use repost on the last one that missed, but okay. I do the damage first. You take nine slashing damage, and you need to make a con save. That does hurt. 27. Okay. All right, I'm going to attack my repost. Repost. 
28 for uh, 18 for 10 damage. That's a hit. You, uh, you, you cut a line across his chest. Right. Um, and the last one, um, he's going to lunge at Veral. Uh, yeah. A 13 does not hit. Okay, you're up. Nope. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to rage, but I don't think I'm going to frenzy. Not yet, at least. So I'm going to rage and reckless attack this. I'm mostly raging because I don't want to remove the bonuses from my sheet. Okay. <laughs> uh, versatile attack, reckless advantage. And then my second attack on him, because I'm assuming uh, 1410 does not kill him. Oh, um, it does not. Uh, the 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 additional 14 damage will. And then I'm gonna move uh, here. You kick over that chair as you do. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. Romulus. Get these orcs off of me. Rami is in a little bit of shock, considering he just walked in, saw his, his chief's dark, and then saw her corpse very soon after. She's kind of disfigured, too. Yeah. But he, he shakes himself out of it, and let's see. Here's the. Uh, I ca uh, He casts magic weapon on on his club, and you're gonna go which is a yeah, which is a, a bonus action. And then his main action is to try to bash this one right here, right below him. Yeah, okay. So, plus one to the attack and damage on this. You, on your weapon sheet, you can just increase the magic bonus by one. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay, you hit for eight. And that's it, yeah? Yep. Okay. Back to you, Josan. All right. Um, so, he hears, like, a lot of, like, fighting... Yeah, and he just watched one of the orc zombies get dead, so he's gonna walk forward, 5, 10, 15, and as he's coming, he's like, is it, is it, is it all over? And then he sees everyone, he's like, oh, no, guess not, all right. Um, and then he quickly thinks to himself, um, he's gonna move one more square, just so I can actually see everyone. Uh, and going back to a gold deep, but a goodie. Uh, he once again breathes into his hands, forming that f uh, flower of fire before bloop, and it bounces off the ground towards the <laughs> one to the south of Romulus. Okay. Uh, that is a hit. It is now wounded. And then, uh, for, at the end of his train, goes, uh, yeah, do, you, do you know any of these other ones? Just just curious if you know any of these orcs. I guess, uh, Ro, do you know any of them? Nope. And that's, that's where he's going to end up. Vakla, you're up. All right. So, I'm not sure which one I use uh, repost again last turn. You use it I'm on gonna... this one. All right, that's the one I'm gonna hit. You're gonna hack and possibly slash? I'm gonna do both. Alright. He, he is uh, near death. death. Re death. He is near re death. Okay. Re death. He's almost okay. double dead. I'm gonna finish it off. So, death first it's a re -death. slash, then it's a hack. Okay, well, he is dead. A re dead. I'm gonna use a uh, second win. Uh, that should be 11. So I'm gonna gain 11 hit points. And uh, that's my turn. Okay, their turn. The four remaining ones are gonna try to paw at you. They got a plus four, 16 are up. 
There's one. I should uh, probably copy paste this formula here. Okay. You take nine. Constitution save, please. If you uh, have your like the little line flashing in the, the chat box and you hit up, it'll actually go through your previous commands. Yeah, I always forget that. Thank you. Okay, you save. No problem. Uh, number two. Is a miss. Number three. Is a miss. Number four. Is a hit. I'm gonna use Lucky to reroll that. Fourteen doesn't that miss. hit. Okay. And that is Varal's turn. I had this guy. <laughs> Reckless attack at fly. Are you still sending? So yeah. Which one? The one south of you? Yeah. Uh, the second attack, he is deaded. Quite. Uh, well that's it for me, but I'm gonna move here, just so I can hit them. Okay. Promise. Okay. Um... Same story, one more time. I don't have to cast just to get it. Right. I get to hit him again. And I got magic bonus. He's dead. Hit. Well, that doesn't happen often. <laughs> Usually I have some sort of fire there, but this works too. He's doing a little dance. You done? Mm-hmm. Go soon. <clears throat> so Vaclo looks pretty beat up, yes? Um, yeah, he's starting to buckle at the knees. Okay. Uh, Dro is going to move forward. And this disgusted face appears. He's just like, as he starts to step onto these, like, dead corpses that are in this space. Um before he uh, reaches out and this kind of blue mist is rising from his hands as he says something in Druidic and touches Vaclo on the back and it's this like very cold very soothing sensation as he's going to cast some Cure Wounds uh, I might even cast it at second level uh, buh, buh. My favorite yep. healing spell. Cool. I you didn't ask me to cast it at a higher <laughs> level. That's that's super <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, uh, so I'll just roll another it, D. Uh, it's a slight. Yeah. All right, that's eleven hit points. points. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, and then he's just gonna like look at this as, uh, Undead orc in front of me, like, all right, it's, um, I'm not taking, just uh, don't attack me. Okay, Vaclo, back to you. All right, I'm gonna hit the first, the, the one on my west of me. I'm gonna hit it once. 15. It's wounded. I'm gonna hit it twice. It's dead. It's deaded. It's deadest. I'm gonna use a bonus action. Shield bash the one east of me. It's gonna fall in its ass. Oh, it's gonna get back up right after my turn. Okay. Yeah, you keep going right I'm before done. the bad guys that you knock prone. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and he <laughs> That's... Stands up and he's gonna take a take a swipe at you. Missing. Burrow, you're up. Well, guess what I'm going to do? Just one wild... Are you going to attack recklessly? Yes. You're going to lay down your arms and surrender? <laughs> He's wounded. He's dead. And this time, Burrow does not have to mutilate a corpse. He can actually just calm... That's great. I did for you. Um, 
I'm probably go gonna fall down, take a, bre a breath, because I need it. Vaclu kind of looks at the corpse of the orc daughter shaman. He's not proud of what he did, but he knows where it came from. Like, he was influenced. He had to pull the trigger. And he's gonna take a short rest. You just declared it's short rest time? Well, he's gonna try. He's gonna stay here. Okay. To the rest of you, Vakla looks like he has no intention of moving. <laughs> um, he's kind of laying his head between his knees. He's sat down. His blade is beside him. Romulus kind of uh, lets his his uh, quarterstaff like drop to his side, and he kind of works his way around the table and pushes this larger corpse out of the way to, to get a better look at uh, Nurga. You said Nurga? Nurga. Nurga. Yeah, we didn't we didn't get to observe her name for very long before she was just another corpse. Just unceremoniously butchered. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was very ceremonious for Vaclo. But she, uh, he, he kind of like kneels down next to her and like looks over the, the wounds and, and like how very clearly broken up she now is. Big, big and, old hole in her forehead. Uh, he, he sort of spends a minute just casting and mending over and over to try to fix whatever holes he can fix. Not not necessarily on her, but like on her clothes. And right. it, it sort of DM discretion on whether that works on a corpse or not. It works on clothes. It no, on, not a work on a corpse. No. Yeah. <laughs> you need to spell, he, he's just trying to... You need to spell stitching for that. Is there some sort of orcish tradition that you're doing? Is just normal? Uh, no, not really. It's just I. Uh, I feel a little bad. I yeah. know she's she's not exactly the best person. Obviously, she tried to kill us on sight, but there's a personal connection here. She goes on. Oh, see, you know working her. for our enemy, who's plotting word destruction. Well, she deserves yes, to die. She's still young. She's not. She. In fact, nope. those casting Romulus a look that there's no like. He's certain of what he's thinking of what he just said. Well, I mean, nobody really deserves to die, no matter how bad they are. He just said that we had to do this, so I get it. This is curious. I've never met an orc before. Obviously, oh. we're all in you. A loss of life is always a shame, but when they strike first, we strike. I know, I know. Uh, I'm not mourning the death. She, she didn't give us much time to to bond or anything, but it. I saw her face almost every day growing up. She she was important to in our culture, and yes, I don't acknowledge our culture, but. It's hard to draw something like that. At those words, you can see that uh, Vaclo casts his look back to his feet, and he bows his head, like, from what you said and for all, from what you both said, he's like... He's, you can see he's ashamed of what he did, but he's also, like, convinced it was necessary. Varal's gonna look at uh, Romulus uh, doing his... Uh... I, I will call it a ceremony. I know it's not a ceremony, but I'll call it a ceremony uh, with the the dead orc. And he's gonna look at Vaclo, who obviously like is not really torn, but kind of torn. And uh, we're all gonna say, I, I I think it would be respectful to have a minute here, like a few minutes, let people gather their thoughts. Vaclo says nothing. He agrees. Uh, I'll sit down on this chair, and we're all just gonna kind of rest and wait to be ready to go on. I'm gonna let the party decide with. 
is it is it possible not to to, to stay here? It's kind of smelly. There's dead bodies everywhere. I, I can wait with you outside if you want. <laughs> All right, we just don't want to be in this this disgusting room. And as he's stepping away, like you can see him, like I stepping out of this corpse that he's like has all this decaying flesh on. He's like, Egh. yeah, Vaxel's gonna kind of wait a few moments, but he's gonna look around. He's gonna agree. He's gonna look at Romulus, like follow us or take your time. He's gonna come. I mean, this is gonna kick some corpses off the table out of the way and sit in a chair in here to take his rest. Okay. You guys gonna rest for an hour? Yeah. I'm gonna roll some dice. <laughs> I got seven. Might as well roll one. Oh yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, as far as I'll a short rest goes, I'm gonna let you finish. But the moment it ends, something happens. Alright. I would let you finish, but <laughs> <laughs> Well, he would have interrupted us before we rolled the dices if Right, yeah. Uh, you guys finished short rest. Just as you guys have kind of recuperated, in both sections, uh, you guys in the out exterior and you in the interior, you guys both hear clambering up, coming up the stairs from below. From and the inside, I'm assuming? Like from yeah. <clears throat> Don't remember where the stars are, it pinged at random. Uh, Romulus, you see huh. this armored creature. You can see through its visor of its helmet that there's nothing in there. Well, what are you doing? Don't move. Okay. <laughs> uh, and he's wielding a sword. And he's wearing a chain shirt. And he, yeah, he's wearing this this full masked helmet. Actually, he's not wearing a full masked helmet. He's wearing a helmet that covers that would cover like his crown and come down to the bridge of his nose and come down on the sides. But there's no there's nothing underneath the helmet. And uh, coming up behind it, you see shambling servants and whatnot, uh, which is what comes out of the stairs on the other side. And um, you, you're not sure, but you're, you can kind of guess that what you're staring at is the undead Draugr slot, a slog fitter. And he has come with the remaining servants to try to find out who has disturbed the castle. And we're gonna go to initiative. Hey. Seriously, can I just quit? <laughs> no, you can't. I mean, you could. No one's stopping you. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'm gonna stop you. Right, is Jacob, I press auto resolve. I'm tired of having this initiative. <laughs> All right, um, back overall. Who wants to go first? Uh. Well, Vaclo, my plan was to hold this door by myself and let you guys fight the big guy. So up you to you. First. I would like to go first. To just keep it as it is. Yeah, so we agree, Jaken. I go. Okay. Yeah, Laurel first. Um, so, Slagfitter got initiative, which is really bad for Rhymus, who's alone. Uh, so, this swordsman, uh, what kind of sword does he have? I press F to Rhymus. Uh, he's, Good thing I took that rest. He's got a long sword that he he's, he grips in two hands and he lumbers forward. Uh, and as he steps fully into the room, he is going is to use an ability where he increases his size. That's if great. His family, we're gonna help him. <laughs> it's for family. I'm getting into that show. It's <laughs> yes. Do you like it? 
I really like Bill Burr, so I want to like it, but it's just Same so here. sitcom-y, and I just... It's... Yeah. Just I mean, here, I'm, I, I've a... had a few laughs, so I'm, 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 I'm in season two. The entire show is like, I'm done watching it, but then I watch another episode. I'm done watching it, but I watch another episode. I just couldn't stop. I finished the whole... It brings a smile and a cringe just as easily. So yeah, it's, it's not so bad. Not the worst. Well, Bill Burr is my favorite comedian, so he. I, I do it. love Bill Burr too. So yeah, yeah. Y you see some of his calls into the. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. He doesn't have a longsword. He has a battle axe. Regardless, he's still holding it in two hands. Uh, that is his I action. Uh, turning large. So Romulus, you're up. Um. I cast mage armor on myself, as I say. Oh, um, right, so this seems to be a problem, and you should leave before my friends get here, or uh, something's gonna ha happen to you. Um, the hollow <laughs> helmet speaks back to you and it says, uh, I need an accent, I need the right accent. I, I, I don't do it right, but I'm being consistently poor at it, um, but <laughs> now I can't seem to conjure it. You've come into the home of my family. You must die. Well, we, we thought it was empty. Uh, All right. Uh, so mage armor is an action, do, yeah? Do we all, all hear that? Yeah, yeah. You guys hear that exchange going on from inside. All right, you done? Yes, and I get to update my AC for once. Okay. Baral, you're up. Already? Oh no. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, uh, I'm gonna go straight against the door. Uh, Way, doorway. Uh, doorway. I'm actually not gonna rage quite yet, because these things are rather easy to kill. Uh, I'm gonna tell Vaklil and um, Drozan, uh, I got this door, I'll call if I need help. Go help Romulus, and I'm gonna smash. You gonna smash? Oh yeah. Ulk, smish! Uh, do I need to rage to reckless attack? I don't think so, but I'm gonna check. No, you don't. I don't. That's perfect. So I'm gonna reckless attack. Since it's a one-on-one, -on -one, it shouldn't hurt too much. And I'm probably gonna regret these famous words, but... Yeah, we're all we're all chiseling your tombstone with these words. You're not gonna regret. Uh, well, no regrets. You crit. Unfortunately, you rolled a two. Uh, so you didn't kill him with that. Uh, the second attack will kill him. Uh, oh. Unless. Unless. Uh, I forgot to remove the rage damage, so remove four damage total. He's still dead. Okay. And, yeah. He is for real dead. Okay. You done? Yep. Okay. I am looking something up real quick. But go ahead, Vaclo. You hold them off here. I'm gonna take care of that. Fifteen feet. Oh shit, he's big. <laughs> Famous last word. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So you see, All you right. see this this Trinity. undead, headless, helmeted undead that has grown to so that the top of his helmet is touching the ceiling. You're the one who came for, and I'm gonna smack it. Uh, I think I can try to do that. I am Slagfeeter, Lord of this manor. And you deserve to die for what you did. So, 18 to hit for 18 20 damage. To hit is a hit. 20 damage is 20 damage. And... And... I'm gonna try to. <laughs> it's ridiculous every time I do that on a large creature, but I'm gonna try to trip it. I'm, I'm just okay. charging it head on with my shield. Uh, he has a plus two to strength. Um, so he saves. All right. So second hit's gonna come. Huh, that's a crit for. Hmm, okay. Fourteen times. All right, he's actually starting to look pretty rough. He's he looks wounded. If it worked once, it might work twice. I'm gonna action search. Uh, does that refresh on a short rest? 
It does. Uh, okay. Wait, I'm gonna read just to be sure. It does. Short or long rest. <laughs> Fighters Two never more having, never having yeah. wellspring of ass kicking. My one first round of ass kicking. All right. Well, Slackfitter's dead. dead. Hope you're all happy with yourselves. Uh, Vaclo kinda <laughs> is is very happy with himself right now. <laughs> hey, Jake, can take the book and just put it aside. <laughs> no, that was a cu I custom made that monster, so I just I just <laughs> close this this word document. I'm sorry, but I still have a move, and I can still hit this wait, with the face. Wait! Oh my god! Yeah, I have one last one last attack. Uh, no, Are they he, eating her, and then they're gonna eat him? No, I, he he has an aura that should have affected Vaclo. Um, uh, we can re, re retcon. Okay, it, I have no go problems. Go ahead, go ahead and make a wisdom it. save. It, it, you'll still kill it, but go ahead and make a wisdom save. Perfect. All right. Uh, I have still one use left of lucky, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna use it. You're going to use it, okay? So that's minus one, that's worse, I'm gonna use eight, and okay. I do fail. Uh, did I write down the... no, why would I put the page number? That would be useful. I think you need to roll a d10. Alright. Is he confused? Nope. Oh, interesting. Seven. I'm sorry, roll d100. I'll, I do need a D10, but I also need a D100. For the next seven minutes... Oh. That would have changed the result, but oh well. We're, we're not, I'm not going to recon it. You killed him. Um, you are frightened, and you must use your action and movement to flee from the source of your fear. And that would be the now corpse of Slagfitter. For the next so seven minutes... you. An attack of opportunity, and I still have. 10 you still have some movement. Okay, so yeah, the so the the zamboid is gonna take a swap at you, and you escape. One okay. or two attacks of opportunity. So uh, depends. yep, two. Uh, he's he, no, he's that's that's depends a doorway. on the wall. Yeah, yeah, it's a doorway. Okay, so uh, Vaclo basically just kind of like well, okay, you know what? We'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll put this uh, like we'll do a story part of this. The reason why you were able to kill him was because Spirit Reaver made you keep attacking despite yourself. Mm -hmm. And then okay. uh once Slagfitter is dead, uh even though it's dead, you're still terrified of it. You think it's you know, do you think it's ghost is gonna haunt you? So now uh for the next seven minutes Vaclo is just gonna be running away. Alright. Which is interesting because both exits off of this roof are blocked. So he's either gonna have to find room to slip through and escape or he's gonna jump. Yeah, I'm gonna try to make a hole in the wall, I guess. <laughs> Alright, uh, the zombie's turn. One, two. This one comes up and takes a swipe at you, missing. One, two, three, four. You can consider I have like 18 AC, because I don't use my shield right now. Alright, this uh, zombie is going to slap um, Romulus for five. Um, Bludgeoning damage. Gotcha. 10, 20. And then it's going to dash to there. Alright, this one's going to move up and it's going to try to slap you, uh, Vaclo. I'm sorry, Veral. Uh, you have advantage. Well, you can't double crit. Okay. So he does 10 bludgeoning damage to you. Ew. And the other one is like. Mm. He's zombie egging him on. <laughs> okay, well now the stairwell is clear, so Vaclo can escape. Josen, you're up. All oh, right. Uh, hearing a whole bunch of commotions and then hearing like Vaclo go like ah! as he's running away. Uh, Josen's like, "What's so scary?" And he's gonna take a step in here. Hmm. <laughs> and he is once again going to summon the flower power and hurl it at the undead creature right below Vaclo. Pretty 
Produce flame. Um. Bloop, 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 bloop. Okay, so it's basically like a, a, a weakened uh, flame strike, but it has a utility. I mean, it's like a weakened firebolt, but yeah, firebolt it, it has a utility. That's cool. Yep. Okay, uh, nine damage. He is. Uh, he has been singed. He's now on fire, just for fun. Oh, Slagfitter, I'll just delete you. It's okay. It's okay. At least you got a turn, unlike the last named mob. All right, Romulus, you're up. Um. Yeah, I guess. Um. All I can really do is just swing with a quarter step. Otherwise, I'll be dropping another nuke, which would not be beneficial. Okay. That is a hit. The one uh, directly to your side, right? Yeah. Okay. You done? Um, do I, I don't think I do. No. Okay. We're all good. Well, I'm gonna surprise you, but I'm gonna smash the guy in front of me. No, I can't handle it. Again, reckless attack because one on one it's fair. Okay. Ooh! Alright, he's dead, and, I, and since it's a critical hit, I don't need to roll Undead Fortitude. Noise. Noise! You're, are you raging? Nope. Okay. And you didn't add raging? Nope. I made sure to disable it this uh, time. I was like, you don't have 20 strength, but then I remember using a plus one. Did weapon. you add your extra uh, crit damage for being a uh, half orc? Probably he not. He did not. But he killed it anyway. Okay. Yes. But now I'm going to make sure I add it. Yeah, I think under crit damage, make it 2d10. Because you half orc. Ye. Yeah. Alright, are you done? Do you want to yes, into the I ring? have nothing else. All right, Vaclo, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just um, autopilot you to no, these staircases. Well, so yeah, since um, I he's gonna kill the undead. I'm assailed by vision, so that undead right there is gonna take a swipe at you. Uh, yeah, missing. I'm gonna right. try to. I'm gonna just, it I'm gonna just throw shield. you into the ether because you're gone. It's seven minutes oh. long. Okay, I thought I would get to see what was. Downstairs, but uh, uh, we'll sure, I'll, I'll, I'll put you. I'll put you uh, in the throne room just so you can have something to look at. Uh, and then we'll play the. Let's find him. <laughs> All right, cool. All right. Someone cue yakety sax. <laughs> oh. All right. One and attack against Joson, which is a miss. <laughs> Two attacks against Romulus, hit. Seven bludgeoning, miss. And then one more attack against Varal. With advantage. It hit for four bludgeoning damage. Ow. Uh, no, he does not get any sense against that. This is short-term madness. He has gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs for the next seven minutes. I mean, can you blame him? Cocoa Puffs are delicious. Yeah. Drosan, you're up. <laughs> Uh, with this undead in front of me, he's just like, eh, uh, just no, take see what I want. And once again, we'll kind of claw up his hand, summoning those black acid laced claws before swiping out with a, like, <laughs> <laughs> Um. I gotta I got, I got say, you're playing by far the most unique dwarf I've ever had the privilege of DMing. Thank you. Uh, and that is a hit for 15 acid damage. Oswald also was a very original Oh, skull. and he saved. So, uh, you seem to have killed him, but he he lingers at one hit point. Like, I take out this large section of his chest, and he still stands? Yeah, like, all that's left you. is, like, his, his spinal, uh, his spinal yeah. bones. That's all that's keeping him you. afloat, you know, on the on his wa waist section. And then he's just like, uh, guys, uh, it's someone's not dying. Help, help. Okay. Romulus. And that's where he Hmm. Romulus hears him crying for help, and he has developed quite the attachment to them. So he is going to move away and take the, the opportunity attack. Which misses. Okay. The and wizard saving the druid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and uh, attack the one that you're having trouble with. Oh, he didn't save. Okay, sure. He saves against the 20 damage, but the 5? Nah. I mean, not the 20 15. really replaces uh, mouse has the low damage roller. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, I like Romulus and all, but he doesn't have no lieutenant crossbow. <laughs> Alright, um, you done? I, I look up at, uh, at Drossel and I say, you alright? <laughs> as you say that, behind you, the two zombies are like, <laughs> <laughs> you alright? Uh, mid sob, he's like, I, I checked it and it didn't do it, and it just kept coming. Alright, are you done? Yep. Roll. One wild, stupid guess as to what I'm about to do. Run for your life. Chase after nope. back low. Soil your breeches. Reckless attack. Alright. Yay. <laughs> he's wounded. Oh, he's not dead. What? He has 21 HP. You suck. He has 21 HP. I cry. <laughs> Alright, you're done? Well, yeah. I, right, he's going to try to slap me. you back. I think he hit. He, uh, he hit. He hit. But did not. For four, bludgeoning damage. You're getting bitch slapped. I know, right? I'm losing the most HP right now. <laughs> Alright, uh, Rama is, is about to get uh, cuddled. That's a that's a miss, and that's a miss. Alright. Rosan, you're up. That's okay. Okay. Uh, seeing as that was something I was not expecting, just give me one second as the, them moving uh, changed my plan. Um... Shoot. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, well, let's do another uh, conjuring of the flower power before uh, hurling at... Do either one of those two that just walked around Romulus, do they do they seem... Like, does one seem more desiccated or decaying than the other? Like, does one seem more messed up? Uh, this one, I think, got bludgeoned with a stick by uh, Romulus. <laughs> Okay, uh, then the bouncing ball of fire maybe hits? A nine is a hit. Haha! -ha. He is now wounded. Okay, and then uh, Drozen will step right here, uh, making sure to avoid the uh, mega undead creature. He says, uh, I'll protect you. Yep, I'm going to protect you now. Okay. Romulus, the blind leaving the blind over here. <laughs> Are you gonna go with Lacken? Uh, yeah, you, what you said just just um yeah, I, I thwacked the one that I've already thwacked and it's a fierce thwacking, and by that I mean he's still alive. <laughs> I look back and I say, "Well, <laughs> glad you're here. <laughs> just don't don't panic too much." All right, we're all. Well, that guy's going down. Well, hopefully. One HP, you can do it. Yeah, but he's gonna save. He oh no, not. he did not. So I still have an attack, so I'm gonna since there's nobody oops, sorry. Um were you moving me? No, I, that was an accidental. Okay, so I don't see anybody else in the stair, so I'm gonna run here. Uh one, two, three, four, five. Actually I can move through him. Five, six. I'm gonna thwack that guy with my it's not a thwack, that's a swish. Swish. Alright. He should be dead, He's but he He's super isn't. alive! You notice this keeps happening, like, to Veral? It's only happened to one person other than Veral once. Yeah. Drosin. And other than that, it's been Veral every time. You're just inefficient. Uh, I've been saying that exactly in the Discord chat uh, right now. It's like... <laughs> he failed every time Vaco killed the thing. Alright, this you know, one... It's because... It's because Veral can't seem to grasp that if you cut an arm, like, he expects the guy to die, but he cuts the arm, and the guy just, the, the zombie just goes like, Ooh! 
Ooh. And he picks Everyone it up and <laughs> slaps her with it. <laughs> Alright, uh, right. this one is going to attack Varal. It's going to gonna slap you. And with then advantage? Gonna be a narrow, oh, with advantage. Uh, that's going to be a narrow m miss. And this one's going to attack Romulus. <laughs> and that is also going to be a miss. Drosen, you're up. Okay, uh, how does Romulus and or Varal look? Health-wise. Like, do they look all cut up and banged up? They look no worse for wear. No, neither one is yeah, what I would call wounded. So they've got, okay. like, superficial scratches and, and cuts. Bruises. Alright, uh, then he will once again summon the Black Claws before raking out at the one to uh, the one Romulus's... That is, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, You're so go... rakish. Haha! -ha. Go Savagery. Alright, he, he did it. Is he, see, I told you it's going to save, save you. Uh, kind of tit for tit. So it's all right. And then he is going to bravely step closer to this other undead, but making sure to not step in any other corpses. Okay. Bravely. Romulus. I give him just I raise it up and just thwack it down on his head. The, the one south of me, obviously, not Drosen. The only one left? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, additional uh, you, zero damage. You didn't fill in your crit damage. Go ahead and roll a d6 for me. Okay. Whoops. A d6, you said? Yep. There you go. Nine. Okay. He has been thwapped. You done? Yep. Verall. For all just kind of smoosh into the dead body as opposed to how Drosan is carefully stepped aside them. For all just like, I don't care. Just Aggressively like, stomps. Yeah. And then he's gonna swash. Uh, advantage. Come I like on. to envision he's oh, actually please. saying those words as he attacks. <laughs> thwack! Thwack! Whoosh! <laughs> swack! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! That, that one didn't die! The zombie's turn. <laughs> He's gonna take a swipe at Romulus. Romulus, okay. take seven. Dang it. Are you gonna die, lad? <laughs> I'm fine. I would hope not. I just asked last turn how they were looking. <laughs> <laughs> if I was seven in death, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I was distracted. He went from not wounded to dying so quickly. From six damage. Well, he is a he is a wizard. If he, if he weren't an orc, yeah, six damage. He might have been like, oh dear God, plug up the holes. Drosen, you're up. Sorry, I should have. Oh, um, okay. Uh, Seeing as his new friend, uh, which brings his total up to four, uh, has this been hit, he's like, oh, take this on did thing. And he's going to, once again, uh, slash out with these uh, acid claws. And, like, get All them right. to listen to, like, Led Zeppelin. As it dies, it's going to, uh, like, you cut it, and it, it collapses in a gooey mess on top of you, Drosen. On Drosen? Yep. He goes from being brave to... <laughs> and like this disgusted... And once again, all you can really see is the mouth, because the rest of it is his uh, bone helmet uh, skull. Can uh, yeah. saving through? Uh, definitely um, doing that. I was already in the process. And while he does that, you hear a comment from the middle of the room, a very angry half-orc that says, How come they die when it's you? <laughs> uh... There will be a little bit of, like, a, a dry heave, but he once again manages to somehow keep his breakfast down. Yeah. That breakfast has been ah. threatening to leave for some time. Yeah. Since about dinner. His digestion at this point. <laughs> That's the only reason. All right, now, 
Um, Vaclo is nowhere to be seen. You can hear him, um, you can hear his, his, his panic cries get further and further away. It's clear he's exited the keep at this point, and he's headed down the I trail. I mean, I'm frightened. I don't have to keep running. No, I no, you keep, do. It says like you have know. to spend your, your move and your action every round for the next seven minutes getting away oh, from the thing oh. that scares you. What's your maximum Shit, movement I'm... speed, uh... That, that's 60 feet 60, every... Yeah. That's 10 feet a second, yeah. is basically what he's at. <laughs> I'm 80. I'm 80, so I catch up to him. I, I tell the guys I'll catch up with him, and I like I run after you. All right, all right. I have two rows advance, but yeah. All okay, right, event eventually, eventually, eventually he will come out of his short-term madness, uh, and and Viral, you 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 find him. So how does that exchange go? I mean, Viral, Viral did not even see it happening, so I was gonna say like, what is it? Why why are you running? We killed them all. Like what? What? Why are you scared? I'm probably assailed by a mix of PTSD and uh, visions from Spirit Reaver and uh, the, the visions from uh, killing Strat Fighter. I'm not sure of the name, sorry, Jake, and again. Um, uh, I, I'm probably assailed by ghost visions of past lives and deaths and murder and stuff like that. So when I see Voral, at first, I probably try to run away from him. Well, Varal can definitely catch up to you and hold you, so on that front, you're not going in. Yeah, if you restrain me, I'm probably not gonna oh, fight. Oh yeah, no, Var Varal will try to hold you and be like, calm down, it's... you know me, we fought to get... Uh, well, I would try to shrug it off from... If, uh, seeing Varal in the midst of my panic attack or whatever... That, does that give me another saving throw? You don't need a saving throw, you're good. Okay. And in the so, worst case, let's say you don't wake up, I slap you across the face, that should wake you yeah, up. Yeah, knock me out and it's gonna work too. But I probably snap out of it when I see you like restraining me and after a while of trying to... I'm whimpering and trying to run around you, doesn't work. I come back to my senses. Uh, and we're all everybody? just like there. Like he sat you down in his lap. He's not quite sure how to deal with a human being, like a, an adult human being that's like kind of scared. So he just kind of holds you with one arm and pats you with the other hand, like unsure. <laughs> just trying to calm you down. It's probably the awkwardness of it all which brings Vaclo back to reality. I'm guessing. Sure. So he's gonna ask, oh, "Where are the others? Where?" Where are we? You guys are like halfway down the trail at this point. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, so we're also gonna say the others are still in the castle. They could be in danger. I left them hit there to catch you back. So let's get back to castle right now. We can talk it out on the way there. Like, let, let's hurry. You lead the way. I'm gonna gather my shield and sword and rush to follow, try and follow. Yeah, we're all gonna lead the way, but he's gonna keep looking over the shoulder in case <laughs> he darts away again. Like, God damn it. <laughs> All right. Eventually, you guys make it back to where you were. Yeah. Uh, the entire time, Jorosen has been out of the rooms and away from like the the stairs with the piles of bodies, just trying to get some fresh air instead of this rancid, decaying flesh. And Romulus is carrying the dead body of uh, Nerga. Okay. It's. It's kind of odd uh, that you're doing it. I mean, I understand you know making sure she's all pretty, but to carry a body that's kind of kind of weird. Well, she... <laughs> we have to clear out the bodies anyway, and I also... the way that they're going to do it whenever they get the keep back is not going to be in a way of preservation. Yeah, are we not just going to light the keep on fire? Is it not the plan? If they were going to light it on fire, I think they would have done it a while ago. Oh, yeah, I guess that's right, yeah. Um, I just, it's kind of my plan, yeah, I figure, you know, if there's so many bodies, just, you know, burn it down, build another, but uh, I, I, this, I'm, once again, uh, first time I've, I've been in a keep, let alone seen a keep, so not exactly certain how easy it is to build one. Um, since you're carrying Nurga, and you've patched up her clothes. 
Uh, you note that she has a satchel around her waist. Like a fanny pack? N well, no, it's not in the front. But yeah, so okay. med medieval fanny pack, if you will. Okay, oh, props. Bringing it back. 